Lawyers used to let you clean up the mess Just down on my knees Thought I couldn't stand up on my own Turns out sometimes you're stronger alone Hey, Mike Shimwell here, host of the Shun Podcast. If you want to tell your story, buy a t-shirt, maybe some merch, uh, maybe get some additional resources, you can do so at shunpodcast.com. If you want professional help to heal and recover from life in a cult so that you can figure out who you are and what you want out of this life, or maybe you just want to figure out where the patterns from the past might still be showing up in your life today, uh, you can find help at xjwhelp.com. Again, that's exjwhelp.com. And every episode of the Shun Podcast has helpful links in the podcast and YouTube descriptions. So if you need something, you can always look there. And now, let's meet our guest. My name is Justin. I'm 28, and I am shunned-ish. All right. And Justin, um, what group did you are you shunned-ish from? I am shunned from the Jehovah's Witnesses. Right. So how did you get involved with Jehovah's Witnesses to the first place? Is it something you were born into? Um, I'd like to say I was born into it. Uh, uh, my mom was studying um, years before I was born. Uh, she had two older kids, and she would potentially study with them, you know, go back out. Um, but the way she got in was because of my, her aunt. Um, she was Jehovah's Witness, um, and my mom, when she graduated high school, she went to stay at college with my aunt. And for her to stay there, my aunt told her that she needed to go to the meetings. So my mom, she'd been looking for, you know, um, the truth, I guess you could say, or the right religion to join because her mother wasn't um, really religious. Um, she didn't really put anything on my mom or her sister, her younger sister. Um, but my mom would get up and want to go to church. So she got baptized in a Baptist church at the age of 16. And she went on to go live with my aunt, her aunt in um, Savannah, Georgia. And she went to the meetings. My aunt's husband was an elder. Um, they had one daughter. And... Some things went on there um, to where she had to leave. Nothing of her doing, but everything of my aunt's husband's doing. Um, there were some things that he was hiding that he didn't want to come to light. And he was afraid having her there would expose him. So she left in Savannah and she came back to Atlanta. That's where she was from. And she had my sister, my brother, and then... A couple of years later, she had me. So in between that time, she would study with the sisters. If they came by, she may go to a meeting here or there. But um, especially after I was born, that's when we moved to the country uh, near Augusta. Um, we lived in a trailer on my grandma, my great grandmother's land. So we were right next door to her. So I grew up uh, my first like seven years with my great grandmother, my great aunt and my great uncle. And then my mom, my stepdad, and my brother and sister who are older than me. Um, so the beginning of life, <laughs> I like to call it, was very nice. Um, we were we went to the Kingdom Halls, I remember. We would go, we would sit in the back room a lot because we always get there late. Um, but I still celebrated my birthday. Um my mom would go all out for my birthday. So I had themed birthday parties from Rugrats, Lion King, you know, dinosaurs. Um, First Sesame of all, Street. that's awesome. But was that, <laughs> so were you, you, you all celebrating birthdays because your mom, she wasn't baptized at that point. She was still just no. studying. Yeah, she would study. We would go occasionally to the meeting. Um, I never knew any other religion. We never, like, she never took us to a different church. It was always the kingdom hall or nothing. Um, so as a young person, a little baby boy, uh, she would tell me, you know, I had a little Bible book story, you know, um, I forget what it's called. It's my book of Bible stories. Yes. My book of Bible stories. And I know a lot of people that I've heard, they say like, Oh, the pictures were kind of crazy. They scary. I'm a little morbid. I kind of like the photos. <laughs> You're I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'm a little dramatic. So I'm like looking at like 
Noah's Ark and the people like screaming out, you know, trying to get help and the lightning and the thunder and the waves. And I was just like, that's kind of cool. <laughs> I'm like, it's kind of messed up that these people are dying because I don't like that. But I'm like, the scene is kind of nice. Um, but I was very inquisitive. Um, I was shy with adults. I didn't like adults other than my parents, you know, but I was afraid of every other adult <laughs> that was around me. So I was open-minded and I'm still open-minded, um, but I would ask crazy questions <laughs> that I remember. And my mom would just be like, you know, well, hell, Jehovah does this and Jehovah does that. And I'm just like, who the hell is this Jehovah guy? <laughs> I'm like, okay, what does he do? She's like, he's God. He's up in the sky. I'm like, all right, well, who are his parents? And she's like, he doesn't have parents. I'm like, you know, I'm like four or five. I'm like, I'm trying to compute. How does he not have parents? Well, where does he come from? Like, who is his mom? Like, who, is there a mom God? Is there a dad God? <laughs> and so... Logical questions for a kid, right? You're... Very logical. I was always thinking. That's why I say my mind is always going. I talk a lot too, but my mind is always going. And I was just like, this don't make no sense to me. And I'm like four or five. But I'm like, I like my book of Bible stories, you know, seeing Cain kill Abel. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is interesting. It's like a TV You're the show. the kid who was just there for the violent stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the funny thing is, I'm not a violent person, but like, you know, Little boys, they like to see stuff blow up and stuff. But, sure, you know, I'm not, of course. You know, I'm not an arsonist or anything. But I was just like, it's interesting. It was dramatic. It entertained me. So we would go to the meetings, and I would sit there with my book of Bible stories, and they're talking, they're jibber-jabber. I don't know what they're saying, and I could care less. But I'm, like, looking at the pictures, the nice, colorful pictures, and I'm just like, oh, a pillar of salt. You know, oh, that's nice. I wonder how that happened. <laughs> you know? So those are my early memories of it. And my aunt, um, uh, she's no longer with us now. But she would come from Savannah. She would bring her daughter. I don't remember her husband ever coming. Uh, uh, I don't think he was, you know, welcome. Um, but she would come visit her mom, who was my great-grandma next door. And I just remember she was so sweet. And she had this energy that just, I gravitated to. And like I said, I was terrified of other adults. But she was like one of the adults. So I was like, oh my God, she's here, you know? And I'm like running out in my little overalls, barefoot, because we're in the country, running over to her. It's like, hey, auntie, auntie. And she's like, hey, and you know. But I'm like, you're a Jehovah's Witness. My mom studies, so come come talk to my mom, <laughs> you know, just trying to get her to come over and talk to my mom. Cause I'm just like, we're studying the same thing. And, um, she was so sweet. Um, she was very laid back, chill, very, um, uh, she was like her mom, my great grandmother, they're very quiet people. Um, my, my granny, and I'll probably talk about her later on <laughs> my mom's mom and my other aunt, they're firecrackers. And I think I'm, I'm kind of like them, but you know, I don't take no shit, but <laughs> um, they're firecrackers. So they were a little bit different. She was very nice and sweet and soft. So I like to go to her. Um, but yeah, I celebrated my birthdays. We didn't celebrate any of the holidays. So I didn't do Mother's Day, didn't do Father's Day. We did Christmas one year. <clears throat> I think I was six years old, five or six. And my mom was like, we're going to do Christmas one year. And I was like, oh. Christmas, like I, I never had a Christmas before. I'm like, this is new, you know. I kind of feel normal, like the other kids at school. And um, we did Christmas, did the tree, did the gifts under the tree, and I was just like, oh my god, like this feels so nice, and I have still good memories from that. I don't know what made her want to do it. Um, yeah, like I, said, we I was gonna too... say that's that's odd. You know, most most stories, it's maybe the parents celebrated Christmas then gravitated towards Jehovah's Witnesses and shut it down, your mom wasn't doing Christmas and then just decided to toss one in there. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like in her life, she celebrated everything. My granny, you know, she she was a single mom. My um, mom's dad, I can't call him grandpa. It's just weird. My mom's dad, uh, her husband, my granny's husband died when she was four and her younger sister was two. So she raised them as a single mom um, all the way up. But they celebrated holidays. They went to their proms. They had Christmas. They had their birthdays, you know. 
And so for me, I had my birthday, but I don't know. I didn't think too much on it. Um, but I knew we weren't supposed to celebrate Christmas, but that random year, she just decided, like, we're going to celebrate Christmas this year. And I was like, oh, yay, you know? And um, my brother and sister had celebrated Christmas, of course, because they're nine and seven years older than me. Um, so I'm like, cool. And um, um, I just felt normal for the first time. I don't know. I just felt normal with my family and, you know, kids at school because little kids were doing Christmas activities. And that's why I always look back on that time as like the joyous years because it was just, I felt normal. So um, I got to age seven. I celebrated my, what would be known as my last birthday. <laughs> um, had a good time there. My mom has an uncle, my, uh, she has an uncle and he had just got married and he wanted her to work for him in Alabama. So the home that I know, um, I was born in Atlanta, Georgia, um, Southwest side, and, but we lived, we moved to, um, the country. So I've only known this place. So we left and moved to Alabama, a place called Prattville, Alabama. And I was just like, oh my God, it's new. <laughs> I was like, it's like a suburb town. Like they have a mall, they have shopping centers and everything. Um, so I was kind of excited. I was very outgoing as well as a child. So like I had friends in school, you know, I had friends in the neighborhood that I played with. Um, the congregation that I went to when I was in the country didn't have children. It was mostly older people, um, a lot of older people. Not any kids at all. <laughs> so I was happy, moved there, played with the kids in our apartments, um, played with the kids at school, you know, it was normal. But um, we started going to a new Kingdom Hall. And um, it was called the Prattville Congregation, I guess you could say. I don't even remember. Um, and there was a sister there that um, gravitated towards us and she kind of took my mom underneath her wing and sweetest lady, like very sweet. Um, she almost reminded me of my aunt a little bit. She's very meek, um, calm, um, respectful. So you respect her. Um, so she took my mom under her wing and I noticed once that happened, things kind of started changing. So not all at once, but that year was the first year that I didn't have a birthday party or was told not to participate in, you know, holiday activities at school. Um, and she had a son that was in my grade. Um, I was a few months older than him. So when they would study, she would bring him over and be like, oh yeah, this is somebody you could play with. So I was like, okay, cool, let's play. And um, me and him were cool. We were in the same grade, went to the same school. Um, I don't really remember too much about him then. Um, but I just know things started changing at our house. Um, and then we moved to another house, but still went to the same congregation. But I switched schools, so I didn't really see him that much. But he was the only person that I was, like, friends with. Um and we switched, and this was the first Christmas that my mom told me that I couldn't participate at school. So I went to school, and I was scared. I was like, I don't know what to do. What am I going to tell my teacher? I can't participate. I got to go somewhere. Like, will I get in trouble for participating? Because once again, I'm not, I don't, like, who is God? I don't know who God is. He's this person that's in the heavens, but I'm like, I answer to my mom. So my mom tells me I can't do this. I'm like, I can't do this. So I'm not scared of displeasing this person they say is Jehovah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Terrified of displeasing mommy. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to get in trouble. So the day went on and it was time for the Christmas party. And I'm nervous. I'm in my chair. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't think I was given any direction other than don't do it. So I'm like, what do I do? Do I just tell them no? Uh, I get a call um, in my homeroom over the intercom for me to be checked out. And I'm like, 
oh, mom came and got me. That's what she was planning on doing. So I go to the office and we get into the car and I'm like, oh, so mommy saved me from the Christmas party. <laughs> and then she was like, your aunt, my aunt that lived in Savannah, the other Jehovah's Witness, she collapsed this morning. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what you mean she collapsed? <laughs> like, did she fall out or something? And she was like, we have to go back um, to our, where we used to live, where my grandma lived and be with the family. So I'm like, well, what's wrong with her? She collapsed, she passed, like fell out or whatever. And so that's why she came and picked us up. So I was thinking maybe it was Jehovah that, you know, got me out of this somehow. I don't know. Jehovah saved but I was thinking, yeah, he saved me. But I was like, but at what cost? Because I'm like, she, mm-hmm. like, I, I was eight years old. So I'm like, she, they just said she collapsed. So I'm like, what do you mean she collapsed? She fell out? Um, Don't know what happened even still to this day, but she um, ended up passing, I think a couple days later, right, right before Christmas time. Wow. So we were about to be out. Yeah. And it was the first death that I dealt with in my family. I never had to deal with death before. And I remember I was like, wait, she was my favorite aunt. <laughs> like she was so Yeah, sweet. and that's sudden and shocking for a little kid who's never been exposed to this. Yeah, I was like, she was so sweet and kind. And I remember we were riding down and my mom was just talking all these stories because she would spend her summers as a child there with her, um, with her sister and her other cousin. And I was just like, well, you know, what's gonna happen to her? And so we got there and they, the rest of the adults went to Savannah, her sisters and my grandma, I think they went there to be with her. And my granny tell me to this day, she said, when they got there, the witnesses were all over the place. They were all there because she lived by herself in Savannah. That's a couple hours away from her family. So they were all there and they apparently were trying to see her. She was in ICU having seizures and things. And my granny said that, um, the nurse told her only family can come. And she was like, I'm her sister. She's like, well, these people said they're her sister. She was like, no, I'm her blood sister. <laughs> and so her and her sister got in to go see her and, you know, take care of her. But um, that was, that would have irritated the hell out of me. <laughs> it would have very much like irritated me. Um, so she passed and, and I kind of didn't understand what that meant, I guess, at the time. I knew she wasn't here anymore, but I guess that's kind of when the hope of everlasting life came into play. And I remember my uncle, my um, granny's youngest brother, sat me down when we got back to Alabama. And he was like, I was sad. I guess he could see. And he was like, you know, well, she's in heaven now with um, your granddad and they're probably fussing up a storm up there now. And I was just like, Oh, that makes me feel better. Like she's up, you know, up in heaven arguing with her dad, probably, you know? And it's just like, I don't know, it just made me laugh and it made me feel more comfortable. Then she's just gone and that's it. Um, or that we have hope for everlasting life. So we left Alabama after that. Don't know why. My mom said she wanted to be next to her grandma since so she just lost her daughter. And so we moved back to the country. Uh, back to the same old stuffy Kingdom Hall, no windows, very dark. Uh, probably fell asleep every meeting because it was boring. I don't know what else to say. Um, I noticed during that time my mom was going through a depression, and I think she suffers with depression a lot. Um, this is also she, right after she lost her aunt, right? <clears throat> yeah, she just lost her aunt, and my mom she doesn't deal well with death she doesn't like going to funerals she doesn't like talking about it a lot um when her granddad died she was very close to him she didn't want to go to his funeral but her mom made her go (laughs) and um the the family was actually upset with my aunt who was a witness because they had the funeral at a church and she wouldn't step foot in Mm -hmm. so they were kind of pissed about that um and my family were pretty tight-knit so we're a pretty tight-knit family. You know, we're like a normal family. We fuss, we fight, we get along, we laugh. Um, so for her to be on the outside, it was kind of different for them. Um, 
so at the time, my Aunt Liz, her daughter, they were the only witnesses in the family. And my mom studied. Um, my cousin, she started studying. Uh, one of my aunt's daughters. She started studying. She had a son, a young son. Um, she got baptized in, I think, 2004. So a year after my aunt passed away. And I was like, why is she baptized? And I'm like, we've been in this for a year. Like, you know, she just got in this. And I noticed a change in her, which I thought at the time was good because the calm girl was wild. <laughs> so I was like, this is good for her. Um, and I'm like, you know, we're bringing them in. We're bringing them in to this good thing. I didn't know anything about shunning. I didn't know anything about worldly people. I didn't know anything about any of that. They're just my family members and we're family, you know. So my mom went through this depression. Um, I started noticing a, a lot of changes as well with me and my brother. We weren't, we were never close. He's seven years older than me. We would, you know, brothers fight, you know, it would be normal. But at this time, it kind of turned a little darker, kind of like he was picking on me. Um, and I would look to mom to be like, you know, I'm the baby, mommy, you know, help me, get him away from me. And she's just kind of like ignored it. Um, so it started shifting us a little bit. Uh, I was a, a boy's mom. You know, I love my mom. Uh, I was went, I went everywhere with her. People thought I was so spoiled, but I was just like, I love my mommy. This is my mommy, <laughs> you know? Um, so for her to just kind of like disconnect from that and just be like, you know, just ignore him. And I'm just like, he's calling me like out of my name. Like this, this is very disrespectful. <laughs> and I'm like nine or 10 and I'm like, I, this is crazy. I don't like how he's talking to me and treating me. Um, so it, it kind of started changing there. Um, an incident happened where I got spanked and I never got spanked. I was a good boy. I never wanted to disappoint my mom. I never wanted to um, make her upset or anything. Um, and long story short, my brother lied on me <laughs> in a situation and I got my ass handed to me. I mean, straight up. And I was telling the truth. That's the thing. She was telling me to tell the truth. And all. I'm telling you the truth. You know, this is, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I don't know. I mean, I know how to lie, but I don't know. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm too terrified of you. I'm terrified of my mom. Um, so she whooped me and whooped me and whooped me. And I was just like, I told the truth and I got whooped. <laughs> I was like, I was honest to you. And then she made me lie. So I was like, you made me lie to get you to stop. So I don't know. I think that's unhealed trauma that I probably got to unpack at some point. Well, say it starts shattering the the vision you had, you know, being, a, I think you said you're a mama's boy, being, being that person to some degree, and you, you hold your mom to this level of esteem, and now she's kind of letting you down in this moment. You're, you're saying, oh, she's, she's not maybe everything I thought she was. Right. Um, she has problems too why were you so terrified of your mom you say you were you were so terrified of her but it sounds like like up to that point you guys had just had like a lot of fun and a good relationship was there a side of her you saw uh maybe with um, your or something or your, your older siblings or yes so okay. i'm like i said i'm nine years younger than my oldest sister and then i'm seven years younger than my brother so growing up, they were in their preteens, early teenage years. Um, I saw how she did them, and I didn't want to get dealt that way. Um, okay. There was also my stepdad. Um, he's very mild-tempered, quiet, hard worker. He was young when he married my mom, and I didn't realize it. My mom was 30 when she married him. He was 21, mm. and he... Um, basically inherited three children that were not his but he treated us like he was our dad and like we were his kid i was basically his child i was one when they got married so he's the only person i ever known um there was some domestic issues going on too um not him to her but her to him um she was she would get violent with him um 
while we were there and I would see it all the time. Um, so I think I was just like, yo, this is a powerful woman. I don't want to mess with her. I don't want to get on her bad side because I've seen the things she can do. And I mean, like my stepdad was like six, two at the time, probably 300 plus pounds. And she could throw him like a rag doll if she wanted to. And I was just like, this scares me. <laughs> um, I'm not going to mess with her. And also, I think I just didn't want to let her down. I like I wanted her approval. I didn't want her, her to be upset with me because she was like the number one person in my life. Like my mom, just my number one person. Um, my sister was number two. Sometimes switch. <laughs> it depended. Um, I relied on my sister a lot. Me and my sister were extremely close. Uh, we're still close to this day. I would leave out of my room with my brother and go run into her room in the middle of the night to go to sleep because I knew she would protect me. I was like, he gonna let my ass die. <laughs> he gonna let me die. I was like, I'm gonna go to Big Sister because she's gonna protect me and she's gonna make sure I'm good. So, so me and my like sister... nightmares or something? Or... or... Uh, night, not really nightmares. I just I would wake up in the middle of the night and like dark places creep me out. Like the closet being there creep me out, and I was like, "He's not gonna protect me. He's gonna leave me." So I'm like, "I need to go to my sister." So I crawl out of my bunk bed and I will always go to my sister's uh, room and I would sleep with my sister pretty much all the time. Um, and I forgot to say when we left. She didn't come with us. When we first moved to Alabama, she stayed. So that was my first time being away from her. It was just me, my brother, my mom, and my stepdad. Um, so that was my first time being distanced from her when she wasn't living with us. And but at the time, I was all right. You know, I wasn't, I didn't have the heat on me. She had the heat on her. Um, her and my brother didn't get along. They fought all the time. And her and my mom didn't get along. Um I remember when I was younger, I used to think that my mom hated my sister. <laughs> I was just like, why does she not like her? Um, and I think it's because my sister's opinionated just like she is. Um, and she's, um, you know, she doesn't need a lot of help. Um, she's very ambitious. She always strives for more. Um, she played basketball. Both my siblings play, played basketball, got scholarships to colleges and stuff. Um, but yeah, mommy, yeah, I didn't want to mess with her. Um, and it seems like in this <laughs> moment, um, when you're you're the object of that um, anger, it sounds like uh, that kind of maybe changed things a little bit, or things started to change there. Yeah, and I think... I don't know what my brother went through because um, we never, we never, from the time I can remember, we were never close. But he had so much anger in him as well. And um, sometimes it, the house would just get volatile, like the older we got between both of them or between one of them. Um, there were some incident, uh, incidents where my brother and my stepdad fought as a teenager. Um, my stepdad, he never hit him. He mostly, you know, restrained him, but like he would punch him and do whatever, like fight him like a grown man. So in those instances, I don't know why he was so angry or what he was going through or had been through. He suffered with anxiety as well. Um, and my mom definitely has anxiety, but I think she has anxiety and depression, uh, as well as I have anxiety. Uh, I figured out um, at that time, around that time. Um, I just remember my sister was gone. And this is before we moved, but it was the summertime. I think I was six years old. And I thought I had this overwhelming feeling I was going to die. And I was terrified. And I was just like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm hyperventilating. And I don't know why. Um, the only thing that could calm me down was my sister. So she would come in and like, you know, I wouldn't tell her what was going on, but I would just be like, oh, sister, hey, play with me. <laughs> um, so when we moved and she stayed uh, with our grandmother, I um, 
would call her and that would help me. Just speaking to her on the phone would help me. I started developing very bad social anxiety. I didn't like going out like to restaurants or anything. Um, I would like start breathing very heavy, almost, almost like hyperventilating. And I don't know what caused it, but we'll see. <laughs> um, but yeah, we were- sad to see a, a, such a precocious sounding kid who loved to go talk to people and and it seems like you had a lot of an outgoing personality and it sounds like things started changing at some point uh um, yeah and, and i think it was all internally in our anxiety. household yeah because i was very outgoing i made friends everywhere i went um especially in school and i mean i moved schools a couple times and it never really bothered me because i would always make friends you know i was the cool chill kid who liked to laugh i love to laugh i like to make jokes so i make people laugh and i just got along good with everybody that i went to school with um but i did start noticing a change i kind of start calling those the beginning to the dark days uh, <laughs> but we were back in that congregation with all the old people no windows dusty boring and um my um cousin she got baptized so as soon as she got baptized she's looking for a husband she ended up finding one and they told her the elders told her um he's not ready <laughs> he's not spiritually strong and they got married anyway and pretty much what everybody was telling them happened um he wasn't a spiritually strong head and uh she was very feisty like her mom like my mom and my granny <laughs> so she, domestic issues started happening at their house as in violence as in they were fighting and i ain't gonna get into her story because it's a lot there but it was a mess <laughs> to say the least. And I was just like, dude, is this what these people do? They they just sit here and fight their husbands? I don't understand. Like this is crazy to me. Um and her child that she has is um on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So he has autism and development issues. And she wasn't a very patient person with him. So she would take her anger out on him as a child. So while I'm living here, my mom's depressed. My brother's going freaking bananas. I don't know what's going on with him. My sister at the time is at college. She actually went to Washington, D.C. at Howard University. So she was getting her degree there playing basketball. And my cousin's over here fighting her husband, talking crazy to her son. And I was just like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> uh, what is going on? And um, around that time, my great grandmother she got baptized, mm -hmm. so she became a Jehovah's Witness, and so we started taking her to the meetings with us, which was nice. I love my great grandma. Um, she was home to me, um, warm, you know, baking some cookies or whatever, mild, and um, she used to dip snuff. I don't know if you know what that is. Oh, yeah. From the time she was 12, I think. And that, at that time, she was like in her early 80s. And my um, cousin, whose mom passed away, she flew down from Virginia. She had just got married to her husband. And my other cousin, who just got baptized, had a rat race to go tell the elders that their grandma is dipping snuff. Why did they do that? <laughs> so they had a rat race to tell the elders on their grandma to, I guess, help her. Mm -hmm. But really, it would just either reprove her or disfellowship her. And like I said, she's 81, 82 at the time. All hell broke loose. <laughs> My family was so upset with them. And they weren't even witnesses. But the thought of going to telling your grandma was like wild to them. And I remember at the time, I was young still, uh, and my mom, she was studying, but she didn't care. You know, she would she would take her to the store to get her whatever she needed. But um, yeah, the two of them, 
they came in and they messed it up. And for a long time, our family didn't really mess with them. The elders didn't do anything anyway. Nothing came of it. They were just like, oh, we'll counsel her. She's 80 some years old. What are you going to tell an 80 year old woman? Yeah. And I mean, she's she been doing dip. it since she was 12. She probably got baptized while she was still doing it too. So, yeah. She had been baptized maybe a year. Yeah. So she got like, baptized at like 80? Yeah. She was 80. It was after her daughter. Oh, no. Was it? I think she got baptized right before her daughter passed away. So she may have been a witness before my aunt passed away. Mm -hmm. So she may have been baptized maybe two years at a time. Okay, so 79 or 78? Like, come on, man. She, you know, she's done this her whole life, right? And it's like, you won't let her get baptized. The Holy Spirit had no problem with her getting baptized, doing snuff, if you believe in that. So, like, why all of a sudden is this a federal offense? Why do we have to shun this this elderly lady? It didn't make no sense. But the elders didn't do anything. Um, I feel like over the years, the different congregations I've been and then I definitely noticed the spiritually weak ones. That was the spiritually weak one. Um, they kind of was just like, oh, you know, she's doing this. She's been doing this for a long time. We're not going to, you know, we'll counsel her, but they're not going to disfellowship her or anything. But the damage was done because once my granny and my aunts and my uncles and my cousins got word that these two went and told on our grandma. Oh my God. I just, I don't even remember all the conversations, but they were not happy with them. Um, so I remember going to, you know, assemblies with my grandma. Um, we would, she would ride with us, um, cause her and my mom got along very well. And, and, um, we ended up getting relocated again back to Prattville, Alabama after my uncle got another job that he wanted my mom to work for. So we moved back. Um, we didn't go to the same congregation that we went to before. It was a new congregation. It was called the Millbrook Congregation, and they had just built it. So we met up with this sister that um, my mom pretty much, like, you know, she took her under her wing or whatever. And so I had my friend back. I was like, oh, you know, I know him, you know, like, we're cool. Uh, and between this time, before her husband wasn't baptized, he would, he didn't go to the meetings. In two years, he'd been baptized. So oh, he's going to the meetings now, too. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like you tell him, like, your whole family's in it now. He had two older sisters that were already witnesses. So I'm like, you know, this is the model family that I can look at, like, look at me and my parents and whoever can look at. Um, now that I look back at it, they weren't like elders and, you know, all that. They were just like normal people. I mean, his mom was probably a pioneer, but um, sweet lady, very sweet. Both of them, very sweet. Um, so I'm like, okay, cool. You know, we're back here. We're going to this new congregation. Um, they just built it. So it's new. It has windows in it. I'm like, oh my God, it's so bright and shiny in here. I was like, this atmosphere is nice. Um, so (laughs) I end up being zoned to a different school. So I didn't go to the same school with him for like the first three months. Um, so I would only see him at the Kingdom Hall. So I had a little bit of a hard time making friends at this new school. Um, I started getting chunky. (laughs) Before, I was a skinny toothpick with a big head. I looked like a lollipop. Um, (laughs) Q-tip. Yeah. And um, I started gaining weight, which was another thing that my brother brought to my attention that really bothered me. He would be like, you're fat ass and all this and that. And I was just like... I don't know. It like hurt me. Like he he basically could have just took a knife and just cut me like through my throat. And like it hurt so bad. I was just like, why am I gaining weight? And it was just my body, you know, you're changing, you're going through different stages in life. I was like 11 years old, 12 years old. So I'm gaining weight. And I noticed it. Other kids notice it. They know my family notices it. And I'm just kind of like, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> I, like, I don't I don't like this body. And I got started getting made fun of for being fat. And I look back at me now. I was like, I wasn't fat. I just had a little belly. It was like, it was all right. It wasn't bad. But uh, it was definitely something I wasn't used to. Um, so at this new Kingdom Hall, 
And this was the first time there was a lot of kids my age. There were a lot of boys that were my age. And in the past, I only had friends that were girls. Um, that's who was all on my street. Those are who the people I gravitate to the most. I'm always friends with girls. So this is when I started noticing the differences between me being able to have friends at school and me being have, being able to have friends at home so, or at the Kingdom Hall. So they were like, oh, all these young brothers, we're all the same age. Just a couple of us, um, like four, five, five, six, seven of us. And I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I, I don't usually play with boys, but I can play with the boys. And they're like playing football and all this and that. I'm like, football? I'm like, I don't really like football. I like kind of like hide and seek our house. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, where are the girls at? There's some young girls here, but I'm like, I started realizing that like, I couldn't talk to them. Like I couldn't be friends with them. Like they wanted me to be friends with these boys. And I'm just like, all right, I guess so, you know? So I end up moving back to um, the old school that I used to go to. It was an elementary school. So I was in the same school with my old friend. So we were, you know, doing the same things again, but now I had eyes on me. So he was, his family was very spiritual. So I couldn't do like the Christmas parties or anything. I couldn't, you know, salute the flag, which I didn't do anyway. Um, but he was there always. And his mom was there too, because she didn't work. She, you know, stay at home mom, pioneer. So she would come up to the school often. And so she would know when things were happening. My parents work all the time, so they didn't know. She would know. So she would be like, oh, well, they're going to have this. So the boys can't go to that. And she studied with my mom. And so my mom would be like, oh, well, sister, so-and-so said, you know, this is happening, so you can't, you know you can't participate in this. And I'm like, God damn, she's a snitch. <laughs> I was like, what? You know, and um, at the time, too, the dad, their, uh, his dad was studying with my stepdad. So, you know, the family were studying together. We were playing together. So eventually, um, I would mostly just gravitate to his family in the Kingdom Hall. I didn't really mess with anybody else. I tried to make friends with some of the other boys and they just weren't my type of people. Mm -hmm. And that's what frustrated me the most. Cause I'm like, I, you know, I'm a good judge of character. I know what works with me and what doesn't work for me. And I could see right off the bat, I'm like, these boys don't work for me. I'm like, I don't, the type of boys they are, I don't like them. <laughs> Not that I don't like them, but I'm just like, we aren't compatible. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I don't want to waste my time on relationships that I know aren't viable or, or compatible. Me and him, we're cool. Like, you know, he's my friend. Um, I still have friends in the neighborhood I played with. And he kind of thought that was taboo. He was like, you get to spend the night over your friend's house? I was like, yeah, I get to spend the night over my friend. How are you talking about? I'm like, he lived downstairs. Like, this is my bro. Like, I go play video games with him or whatever. Like, he's cool. He's like, oh, I don't get to spend the night, you know, with my friends. He had a friend that we went to school with on the other side of his house. He could not go over there. And the other boy, boy I don't he could come to their house. So they shared a fence. So for them to, like, have a sleepover, they would both set up tents at the fence. <laughs> and spend the night in the tent. I know. And I was just like, I was like, bro, why, why can't you just go over there? Why can't you come? He's worldly. Yep. I'm like, okay, so what does worldly got to do with it? I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, they're worldly. We're not supposed to be around them. I'm like, well, what's wrong with them? I'm like, there's just normal people like we are. Like, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't compute. It didn't compute to me. So, um, this congregation that we were in, I would consider it to be a very spiritual congregation. We had a lot of elders, whoever the Kobe was, I have no idea. Um, but they were very sweet. Everybody in the hall was very sweet. Um, all the elders were sweet. All the sisters were sweet. Uh, the ones who I ran into, 
and like I said, I, I, I was kind of oblivious to things. I didn't really look at to them as my authority. I looked at my mom as my authority. So whatever they said, they could have said something went in one ear and out the other. Because I was just like looking at my mom, like, well, I get my direction from her. So I don't know who you're talking to, but this is the one that I listen to. So, <laughs> so basically, we started. I guess progressing. My mom started progressing spiritually. She's studying with the sister. She's getting more into it. I have my friends that I play with. I have my friends at school. Um, the biggest change that happened was it was the end of the school year, and I had developed this good group of friends. We were talking on the phone for hours. We were in the sixth grade, and they were like, "We plan to go bowling, and we plan to go back to one of their houses." to watch movies, you know, play around. We were like 11, 12 years old. And she called me while she was at work because I was waiting for her to get off because she was supposed to give me a ride to the bowling alley. And she said, um, you're not going to go to that. Previously, she told me I could. You're not going to go to that. I said, why? Um, they're worldly people. You don't need to be around those worldly people. I said, but mama, they're my friends. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, these are my friends. These are the people, I, you know, we, I'm on the phone with them. You know about them. And she's like, yeah, no, you're not going to go to that. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. And I was just like, can you explain to me why? Like, you know, what was the reason? What was the reason why? Why can't I go with them? Oh, I was heartbroken. <laughs> I was so upset. I cried. I cried. I cried. I cried. And um, I missed the bowling alley. But she eventually got off work and she let me go to the house. But she went and she met his parents and she let me go. So I was okay then, but that was kind of like the first step in things are changing. And I'm like, I don't know why, you know, and I'm not used to this and I don't like it. Um, other things started changing as well. Um, the TV shows that I could watch. Um, I don't know if you know, but because <laughs> I'm I'm only 28. So back when I was a kid, they had like the show like That's So Raven. She was a psychic yeah. on Disney Channel. And I loved the show. Loved it. Watched it all the time. Um, my friends started coming over while our parents were studying, and we'd be in my room playing or whatever, watching TV. And that's so raven come on. He's like, Oh, you can't watch that. And I'm like, what you mean I can't watch that? Like, oh, she's a psychic, you know, that's demonistic and all this and that. And I'm just like, okay, so um, Fairly Odd Parents love watching Fairly Odd Parents. So I was like, oh, they're magic. You can't watch that. I was like, all right, bro. You Every time you come here, you're telling me something that I can't do that I like doing. And I'm like, what is going on here? So I guess he told his mom and my, his mom talked to my mom. So she's like, yeah, you can't watch this show. You can't watch that show. I was like, all right, fine, whatever. I had a favorite show. Um, it was called Avatar Last Airbender. It came out on Nickelodeon. Hands down, best show in the world. <laughs> Especially at the time that I was a child growing up. Um, and my mom, she watched it a little bit before. And it's kind of like supposed to be like this um, Eastern inspired world, but in a Western way. <laughs> So it's a lot of, you know, um, spirit realms and all this and that. And I absolutely love the show. Shout out to who anybody who knows what I'm talking about and love it too. Best show. Um, <laughs> love the show so much. Um, had the little action figures for it. And my mom, she would be like, they're talking about this spirit world. What is this? And I'm just like, it's just a spirit world. This is just where they go, you know? And, you know, I'm not thinking nothing of it. The sister um, that my mom studied with, my mom asked her about it. So she did her research on it. She came back with a bunch of rigmarole, hoopla, I like to call it, and was saying that the, the styles that they were using, because they would bend things like water, air, earth, you know, all the elements, so they would move it. And she somehow came up that it's demonic. And all this and that. So yeah, my only Jehovah me, can do that in the Bible. <laughs> right? 
He can and move like, the water and shape things, but not 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 cartoons or whatever. Exactly. And I'm like, it's a cartoon show. Like, baby, this ain't real. I don't know what you're talking about. So she was like, this has demonic stuff in it, and they use demons to move this and that. And I'm kind of like, I'm a realist person. I'm like, this sounds like a bunch of shit to me, because I'm like, what are you talking about? This is a cartoon show. None of this is real. This is just made up. Like, this stuff isn't really happening. Do you know this? So my mom came, and she took my action figures and told me I could not watch this show no more. I threw the biggest fit in the world. I said, I be damned. <laughs> I was like, this is my favorite show. I cried and I begged and I pleaded. I was at the moment, please, please, please don't take this away. And I could not watch it. I could not watch it. And that broke me. <laughs> that little show broke me because it was my favorite show. Um, but it, I, I, I was realizing things are changing, you know, mm -hmm. um, the way I was normally living my life, kind of like, you know, I wasn't crazy. I didn't do anything crazy. But the little things started taking place. They started changing. Um, my mom started getting more spiritual. She was like going out in field service. And she would take me with her. And I'm like, okay, we go go out and field service. But I was like, why you got to do it on Saturday morning? Okay, because, you know, this is my time to sleep in. I ain't watching no cartoon. I slept in. Uh, I was like, we already got to go to the meeting on Sunday. And we had meetings there on Wednesday instead of, you know, Thursday or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you know, I'm already doing all this stuff. Man, what you talking about? We got to wake up on Saturday. I got to wake up Saturday morning and Sunday morning. I was like, oh, no, baby, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is my time to sleep in. Um. So we started going to field service, which I actually enjoyed because it got me out of the house and it got me to be around these people who I was trying to get to know. We were closing it to our family when we lived in Georgia. We lived in Alabama. We didn't really have family. It was the witnesses. That was it. So we started cultivating relationships. I'm like, these people are cool. They're funny. They're a little quirky. They're not bad. Um, I can get along with them. I, I have fun with them. I like listening to the stories they would tell. Um, I would get out, go to the door with them, watch them talk to people. I'm like, oh, just nice, you know? So it was more like a social event to me than it was anything else. Um, and my mom got baptized after my grandmother passed away. My great-grandmother, she passed away in 2009. And um, my mom got baptized later that year. Um, but I thought it would be such a big event since it's so important, like your baptism. Um, my cousin got baptized and everybody was there. Even the family that wasn't witnesses, we they were there to support her because this is something that was big to her. And that's just how my family is. They support each other. We all support each other, you know, whether we believe it or not. Like they're not witnesses, they were, but they were like, well, this is something big in her life. So we're going to come and support her. They brought the cameras and everything. Um, so I know that made her feel really good. So my mom got baptized and I'm like, nobody's here. It's just us, me, my dad, and my mom. Um, so I was just like, why is it nobody else here? Like, what, where is her, you know, picture taken and everything? Um, my mom is very isolated. She's kind of like, she, she stays away from people a lot. Um, especially when things are happening with her, she doesn't really like the attention. So that's what I learned from that. Um, <laughs> but, um, she got baptized and pretty much when she got baptized, everything changed. It was, it was so much different and it sucked because I was going into my teenage years when she got baptized. So a lot of things are already changing, you know, hormone imbalances. I'm moody. <laughs> I'm horny for no reason. I don't know why. <laughs> like, everything's changing. And the, it seemed like the more, the older I got, the more it was put on me. Like, I guess like things that are fun or things that you enjoy are sins and bad. <laughs> it's shameful. You should feel shame for them. And I was just like, I don't understand. Like, this just can't be right. Um, my mom also has a condition called fibromyalgia mm. where she has, you know, 
flare ups and pain. And back when this first started, she had a really bad flare up and she was in so much pain. She couldn't even leave the bed. Like she was just stuck there. And while she was there, she was in pain and she was crying. And I just felt so bad. I was like, oh my God. Like, like, I don't like my mom in pain. Cause like I said, she's my number one. Nobody else is there. <laughs> it's just mommy. So I remember I went to her and I comforted her and I, I talked to her about God and Jehovah. And I was just like, you know, um, you'll have everlasting life and you won't have this pain anymore. And Jehovah will take this away from you. And I'm just like down on my knees, holding her hand while she's in bed in pain. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. You know, it's not gonna, you know, last forever. You know, there's going to be a new system and you won't have this pain and all this and that. And I think that's when I started changing a little bit. I started um, listening a little bit more in the meetings. Um, I got my own Bible study with the sister. She started studying with me. And um, which I'm, I don't know why she was studying with me. I, I would have figured her husband would have started studying with me, but she was studying with me, so I didn't care. I was like, she's nice. She's sweet. I like her. <laughs> so she was studying with me and I liked her. I respected her. I still respect them to this day. They're really good people. Um just stuck in a really shitty situation. <laughs> um, I started having to comment at the meetings, which I would get so nervous. Oh, so nervous. I hated it. So my mom be like, you go comment on this, you know, she may pinch you or twist you or whatever. And um, I raised my little hand. I'm be like, please don't call on me. Please don't call on me. And they would say, oh, Brother Justin. Damn. <laughs> And I get the mic and I never had the, um, you know, the well thought out, you know, comment. I would just read from, with the paragraph. I'm just like, da, 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 da. No, thank you, brother. Just, yeah. Oh, my God. Thank you. And I'd be like, I answered. I ain't got to do it no more. Um, so we progress spiritually. She progressed spiritually. I progressed right along with her. And my stepdad, he studied on and off, but he never like, you know, got into it. He would go to the meetings with us. He would go to assemblies and conventions. Um, so he was he was always there to be a willing participant, anything to support my mom, but he himself wasn't really into it. Um, but I, I, I remember in that time, because my parents worked normal jobs, you know, they don't have college degrees. My dad, he didn't even have a high school degree, so he worked at like the Waffle House and he worked like, you know, three jobs at a time. And my mom worked at like Walmart or whatever. And I just remember all my friends at school had houses. And then all my friends at the Kingdom Hall had houses. They had nice houses. Um, they were a pretty, pretty well off congregation. They weren't, you know, they weren't like rich, rich, but you know, like they were, you know, middle class. Mm -hmm which I wasn't used to because the other hall that I went to, everybody pretty much skated by. So I was just looking around. I'm like, everybody here has houses. Why don't we have a house? And I started looking at my parents and like, why, like, can't you do more? Like, what? <laughs> like, we're sitting here in this apartment and I'm like, everybody I know has a nice house. Like, they don't share walls with other people. And I feel bad for that now because I'm just like my parents, they did the very best that they could. And I never went, you know, hungry. I never was homeless or worried where I was going to live. Um, so they did a great job, I say. Um, but at the time when I was a little kid, I'm just looking, I'm just like, they have these things. And I'm, I'm like, we're doing the same thing. So why can't we have that as well? Um, <laughs> it's just, it's just random. But, uh, I started noticing that too. Um, you've talked about it before. Um, the suits. I got my suits from the thrift store. Mm -hmm. um, all the brothers there, even the little boys there, they had the nice little three-piece suit, clean, iron, nice bow tie tied around and everything. They were clean from head to toe. And I'm walking in with like some baggy pants and a shirt from Walmart tucked in with a tie, clip-on tie. 
And I'm just like, I don't look like these people. And I'm like, they look so nice. I'm like, why can't I have this? Like, why, why do I look like this? I'm so embarrassed. And then finally I started getting a jacket because I guess the brothers told my mom I need a jacket or like start wearing like, you know, like a nice jacket. But then I'm like, it's mismatch and all this and that. And I would just be like, I'm poor. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, you know, when you don't fit in economically. Yeah, and I'm just like, all these other young boys here that are my age, I'm like, they're in these nice suits, man. Like, no, it costs some money. And I'm just like, what the hell? Where are they getting this from? And um, I remember one of the elders, he gave me like a box full of ties. And I'm like, I don't know how to tie tie. And they were ugly ties anyway. I didn't want them, so I never wore them. But I just remember, I just noticed that... um, I was different from them in that way. Um, they also picked on me some at the hall. The boys did. And I was getting picked on at school. I was getting picked on at the Kingdom Hall. And I was getting picked on at home. So it was like, I have nowhere to go. Um, I'm getting picked on for my weight at school. And also people saying that I'm gay. And I was just like, I'm not gay. And I was just like, I can't be gay. I'm a Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witnesses can't be gay. So I'm just like, that's my rationale. I'm not gay. I like to hang around with girls. I do feminine things because it makes me laugh. <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, I'm not gay. Whatever. My brother, he's calling me all types of racial, not racial, gay slurs, calling me fat and all this. And I get to the Gina Hall and they're picking on me for whatever reason, you know, for this reason, that reason. And I'm just like, I don't like these people. I'm like, the people that I made friends with, they don't pick on me. So I'm like, in my head, I'm just like, these are my friends. And the people at the Kingdom Hall, these are not my friends. I'm like, these little boys, they get on my nerves. I can't stand them. <laughs> I got my one friend. He picked on me sometimes too, but I was I was okay with him. I was just like, you know. Were the kids yeah. in the hall? Um, yeah. Were they saying that you were gay or picking on you for that or were they just picking on you because you didn't fit in traditionally with what they were wanting you to be i think they picked on me mostly for not fitting in i just didn't fit in when i didn't mesh with them um they didn't pick on me for saying that i was gay or anything um some of them went to my school or was in my school district and some of them weren't um there was one guy he rode my bus and um i'm like i know your dirt so <laughs> don't play <laughs> with me <laughs> um but no me and him he was cool but like me and him we didn't mesh we weren't like i'm not gonna force a friendship on anybody and that's pretty much what they wanted me to do and my mom would be like you know look at these, these brothers this brother does this this brother does that this brother does he does this he's this age he does that and i'm just in my head i'm like baby you don't know what he do at school you don't know what he do on the bus you don't know what he say behind people's back so i'm like i don't think you want me to be like them and i kind of got her back on that a few days ago so a little shade but it's all right but um <laughs> um i just didn't mess with them um i didn't really like them i didn't care for them like I said, I've mostly made friends with girls and that hall I only had a few girls, but like I could, they were unobtainable for, to me. I couldn't even be around them. And some of them had really nasty ass attitudes and we wouldn't have got along anyway. But other than that, everybody, like I said, in the congregation was nice. The elders, I loved them. They were very nice to me. Um, I try to look back now and see like, was there anything there where I just didn't see it, but I look back and I'm like, no, they were, they were always helpful, um, to say the least. Like they were genuine and helpful. Um, when I went back, back when I was a little older, a little changed, but I had changed. Um, the sisters in the hall, they were nice. Everybody kind of felt like a big family in the hall. Um, I don't really have too many complaints there with them. Um, there were some instances where somebody would tell something on me and I don't, I, I couldn't compute it in my head. Cause I'm just like, I mind my business. First of all, second of all, I don't like getting in trouble. Cause you know, my mom was crazy. Now nah, nah, I seen what she don't did. And nah, I ain't about to mess with her. And second, I'm very respectful to the adults, to everybody. 
um, somebody, I don't know who, told an elder that I said something or did something. And I remember how I felt so disrespected, how I felt so um, open to everybody. And I was just like, well, who would tell this? And the brother like tells my mom while I'm next to her. He's like, yo, he's, they said Justin did this and this. I don't remember what it was. And I remember like she was talking to him, but I was just like, who said that? <laughs> you know, I was like, who, who talking about me? Who said this? I'm like, uh-uh, see, I don't play that. Nobody get in my business now. Don't be putting words in my mouth. So I'm like, who said that? And um, I don't remember. I, my mom asked me about it, I guess, when we were in the car. And I was just like, I don't know who they, I don't know what they talking about. I don't say, I don't know what business they in. They need to stay out of my business. But that's the only issue I ever had with them. <laughs> and I was just like, I started watching myself, you know, watching what I say. Because I, like I said, I had worldly friends. Um, I'm pretty outspoken if you can't tell. And the people there are very mousy, very, you know, they listen and do as they are told. And um, I may have a different opinion <laughs> that they may not like, but guess what? It's my opinion. So we progress. Um, I had a sleepover. We had all the boys go to my friend's house and we had a camping sleepover, and I play football. I don't know what the hell I do with football. I don't know nothing about football. and But I'm playing, and, like, you know, I got broad shoulders. They're like, oh, my God, Justin, you're killing it. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but thank you. And um, <laughs> we were all there, and it was a bunch of us. It was like eight or nine of us. And we're all in our tents, and we're talking, and I'm just looking around. I'm like, oh, he's baptized. He's a year older than me. Oh, they're, you know, they're um, unbaptized publishers. They're a year younger than me. And I'm 12, 13 at the time. I think I was 13. So I, we had um, spent the night there. We had the meeting the next day, Sunday meeting. So I went home to change. I was going to go back over there later. And I told my mom, I was like, mom, I want to become an unbaptized publisher. And she was like, Really? She was like, you really do? I was like, yeah, I want to become an unbaptized publisher. And so I'm like, all these other boys are, you know, baptized and unbaptized publishers. I'm like, I feel like I don't fit in with them. Like, I feel like this is where I should be. And credit to my mom, she never, she could be abrasive, but she never pushed me to get, become an unbaptized publisher or become baptized. It was, she kind of left it up to me to decide, but she also like didn't help in some ways, I guess I can say. So she was like, all right, well, when we get to the meeting today, I'll go to the elders and tell them you want to become an unbaptized publisher. So we went to the meeting, told the elders, I want to become an unbaptized publisher. And they're like, oh, really? You know, that's good. Blah, blah, blah. I forgot the steps. It's been so long. I forgot the steps you have to do to become an unbaptized publisher. I don't, do you have to answer questions or anything? You have to meet with the elders. I mean, obviously it's been a long time for me too. Um, yeah. I just remember you had to meet with the elders. They basically just make sure that uh, you have some general knowledge uh, okay. and that you're like not a, not involved in something that you shouldn't be involved in, I think. And that's yeah. about it. I mean, it's, it was a very okay. I think thing. they may have, yeah, I think they may have done it that same day, too. They may have just pulled me in the back room and, you know. Yeah, it was like questions. a one-and-done little meeting and yeah, you walk out and then back. Yeah, so I had, correctly. yeah, so I had went back to um my friend's house. We had went to the meeting. They all went together. For some reason, I went with my mom. I don't know why. Um so I felt left out on that. I was like, well, they keep to go. And then they get to go together and they're sitting together. And I'm sitting with my mom. So I went back to their house and I was like, yo, I'm going to become an unbaptized publisher. And they're just like, oh, really? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, this is like, these are supposed to be my people. This is where I'm supposed to fit in at. Um, and I, that was like 13. Um, and it just went downhill from there. <laughs> so I became an unbaptized publisher and that beca that came with a lot of responsibilities that I did not know and did not um think about so that's when they first put me on the theocratic ministry stool was a nightmare every time i'm i'm the nervous kid that threw up every time before going on stage and i kind of felt like it was a little bit of torture to make me do that because my mom knew 
how nervous I was. She can get on stage and do her little, you know, talk with the other sister. But I got to sit there and get on the podium in my ugly ass suit and talk in front of everybody. <laughs> I got to talk in front of everybody. And I have the worst stage fright. So beforehand, I'm like sitting in my chair. I'm shaking. I'm tipping my toes. She knows what's going on. She's calm down. I'm just like, don't talk to me. Don't say anything to me. Um. And then I just get up before I know it's time for me to go, like right before. And I just, I got to go throw up. I just got to go throw up. I just can't do it. And I come back and I'm shaking. I'm all flustered. And then I get on stage and I read. And they're like, oh, you did so good. You pronounced those words so good. And I'm just like, I don't care. I was like, I don't want to do this. And so we meet with the elders, of course, afterwards. And they go over pointers. I don't even think I paid attention. I was just like, you gonna sign this book or what? Like, I don't like doing this. And I told my mom, I don't like doing it. And you, well, you have to do this and this is this. And then field service um, started for me. Um, like I said, I like field service. So it didn't bother me. I felt like it was more of a social event for me than anything. Um, especially when I would go out with my friend and like me and and him well, would be it like, was, hey, wasn't it? How often did we really talk to anybody at the doors of any you know, of any real substance for mostly we were just talking with each other. Exactly. And um, I liked it when I, when me and him would go, cause we, you know, we're the same age. So we would just be talking about school. He'd be talking about girls at school. I'd be pretending like I'm interested to hear about him talking about girls in school. <laughs> and we're talking about teachers and we're just, you know, having a good time. So I would have my little, you know, presentation prepared his was a lot more elaborate <laughs> mine was just kind of like oh i'm here and here's the brochure or whatever thank you um if you have any questions you know just let us know <laughs> you know very like cut and dry just trying to get past it but um i wasn't nervous to talk to the people at the door which was interesting to me um that kind of helped me in my sales career <laughs> um but um yeah i mean i would schedule myself to go out in service. I would make arrangements to go out in service because my mom worked on the weekends, so she couldn't go all the time. So I'd be like, I would get up on my own, you know? I'm 13, 14. I would get up and be like, oh, I'm going out in service with sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so. And um, I would have a good time. You know, we get into the car groups. I didn't have to deal with what you dealt with. Uh, we didn't have no old ass station wagons. Everything I got in was nice. Um, we had AC, you know, and heat in the wintertime. So it was I'm nice. Sure. I didn't get car sickness. Yeah, they had pretty nice cars. Like I said, they weren't they weren't like rich, rich, but they, they were, you know, middle class. They had nice things. So I would get in the car with them or ride with them and we would go do our thing. So I was fine with that. It didn't bother me. I didn't like commenting because, again, I'm on the spot. I don't like being put on the spot. So... That was it, fine. Um, but at that time, um, my brother, I think he moved out. I think he had went to college, and he, but he always came back. He always came back like a boomerang. And um, <laughs> I started noticing a lot of things in myself that terrified me, like that. I would be at school and I'll be walking, you know, walking in the hallways or in the courtyard and I see a, a boy and I'd be like, oh, he's hot. And I'd be like, oh, wait, hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'd be like, intrusive thoughts. What's going on here? Wait a minute. And then I would be like, no, nah, I can't do that. <laughs> so I ended up getting a girlfriend um, when I was in like the seventh, eighth grade. And... I felt like I just needed something, basically like a beard to hide. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh no, I'm not gay. I got a girlfriend. She's over here somewhere. I don't know what she's doing. She's somewhere, but I got a girlfriend, okay? And so um, we dated <laughs> as much as you could date as a, in the seventh grade who can't go out and hang out. So pretty much we dated while we were at school or on Facebook. Facebook became the life of the party for me. Um, that's when my social life came. Um but that ended because, of course, that was just, just you know, kid stuff. My mom found out because 
one of my friends drew a little heart on my hand and it had our initials on it. And she was like, what is this? And I was just like, got to think of a lot quick. Um, nothing. It's just, these are just my initials, my middle name. And, my and she's just like, just what is this? And I was like, nothing, nothing, mommy, nothing. And she just slapped my hands, just like, don't start this. And I was like, oh, Jesus, I, I got to break up with you because this girl crazy. <laughs> I was like, she crazy. I got to break up with you. I'm sorry. I can't do this. Um, but uh, yeah, that was my girlfriend. One and only. Yay. Um, but uh, <laughs> what was so, it like? Realize So, I mean, it sounds like you started realizing you were being, you were attracted to the boys and it sounds like you really tried to shut it down fast. Oh, like, yeah. Completely. Um, the thing was at the time, my sister, I just found out that my sister had a girlfriend and so she had came out to me. Um, and I was very heavy in, um, no, you're not like, this can't be, you're not because if you are, mama will never love you and she will hate you always. <laughs> and I, and for some reason, I wanted my mom and sister to get along. They just never meshed well. And I'm just, I couldn't understand it. Cause I'm like, this is your daughter. Um, so when she came out, it was just like, no, you can't be gay because mama thinks gay people are horrible and you can't be gay. And I felt so bad because I was just, I tried to deny it. And she was just like, this is me. This is who I am. And I was just like, okay. You know, after a while, it was just like, it is what it is. I was like, this is my sister. She's a good person. I don't think God would do anything to her just because she likes girls. Um, yeah, but what you said there, you, you can't be gay because the mommy won't talk to you or mommy won't accept you or whatever mm -hmm. um you know talking to your sister i'm sure somewhere in the background you were possibly even thinking about yourself i think i was because at that point i've been hearing it a lot at school like oh he's yeah. gay he's gay you know my brother's like he's gay you're gay you're a sissy you're a and all this stuff and i'm just like i'm not gay like you know i think girls are fun or cute or whatever um, but it was definitely suppressing in me. I was suppressing it all in me at that time. And I think it kind of frightened me that she was telling me that she was gay. Cause I was just like, please don't let me be gay. And I was in my head trying to rationalize it. I'm like, well, she's gay. I can't be gay. You know, <laughs> it's like, Hey, you know, this is a one ticket for one family member, you know? So she took that one. So I can't be, um, but I just wanted them to have a good relationship and find finding out she was gay, I was like, they will never have a good relationship. Like, my mom will never accept her. They will never get along. And, um, I was just going through the motions, um, became 14, 15, and we were having a meeting at the hall. And one of the elders, who was one of my favorite elders, he was a nice, nice little white man. Um, he was very nice to me um he was giving a talk and the talk spoke to me i don't remember what it was about but i was listening to it so intensely like more than i listened to any other talk and it like moved me and i was just like i want to get baptized and um after the meeting i didn't even tell my mom i like got one of the elders and i was like i want to talk to you he probably thought i was about to tell something <laughs> I was like, I want to talk to you about something. He was like, okay, cool. Let's go in this back room. And um, I told him, I was like, I want to get baptized. And he was like, oh, oh, really? You you really want to do that? And I was like, yeah, I really want to do it. Like, I, I was on this high, like whatever the brother had talked about, which now that I look back, they probably did it on purpose <laughs> to try to, you know, get people inspired to do things. Oh, yeah, they do that. I was yeah, I was like, it worked on me because he could have sold me anything. Because <laughs> I was like, I want to get baptized. And um, before then, me and my mom never talked about it. So the brother went and got my mom and pulled her in. And she thought I was going to tell her something crazy. Like, I'm in trouble or something. Or I did something. And I could see the panic on her face. She's like, you know, what's wrong? And he told her, he was like, Justin said he wants to get baptized. And she was like, well, why he tell her that? Like a dog with a bone. As soon as she got it, she would not let it go. <laughs> so I was like, she was like, 
he never talked to me about this. You want to get baptized? I was like, yeah, I want to get baptized. You know, I'm very mousy. I want to get baptized. Um, and she's like, okay, cool. And they were like, well, we don't think he's ready right now for it. He needs to finish one of these books. So it switched from the wife, my friend's mom, um, studying with me to my friend's dad studying with me. Um, so we set up a study. He started studying the book with me. I can't remember the name. It was a little yellow book with a little Bible in front of it. It's been so long. We're all close. To it was Jehovah, was maybe? it the Bible? Was it the Bible teach? Oh, Bi- oh, what does the Bible, Bible teach? teach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible teach. Yeah, yeah. I had, yeah. yeah, I had to finish that book. Um, I had been studying it for like five years. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, so, you read all the meetings, you ought to probably know pretty much what's in there anyway. But exactly. But they were like, I guess as a formality, they yeah. were like, you need to study this and finish it with this brother. And my friend's dad was nice. He's very, like, they. his parents are both very calm people, very, you know, soft-spoken, but you respect them. They're very, very nice kind of people. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll study with his dad. So <laughs> I studied with him. And the more I studied, I think I was 14. By the time we got done with the book, I fully realized, all right, I think I'm gay. <laughs> I'm in high school. Um, I'm like, I'm not finding any girl attractive. All the guys that are passing by me, I'm like, oh, he's cute. Oh, he's cute. Oh, he's cute. I'm like, all right. And like in the back of my head, I'm like, okay, stop, 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 stop. Can't do that. No, this is not good. You can't do that. You cannot be gay. Um, pray to gay away. No, I didn't pray to gay away. I think actually I may have. I may have, you know, said a couple of prayers. Probably like, tried please, at Jehovah, some point, please, I would think. please don't let me have these feelings. I don't want to have these feelings. Um, I was like, my mom finds out she will kill me, um, or put me out or, or whatever. And I didn't want to give my brother the satisfaction of telling him I'm gay. <laughs> um, so I realized I was gay. I had finally was just like, I think I'm gay. Um, I don't want to get baptized anymore. <laughs> um, that started a lot of arguments between me and my mom. Oh, wait At a minute. At the time, you me and my brother. So you expressed, I think I'm gay. It wasn't just something you thought internally. I think I'm gay. I don't want to get baptized. You told somebody. I didn't tell anybody. I just told it to myself. Oh, okay. I told myself, I think I'm gay. And, um, but you told your mom like you didn't want to get baptized? Or... I told her I wasn't ready. Oh, wow. Okay. So we finished the book. And um, between the time that I, I finished the book and it was time for me to get baptized, it had been like a year. So in that year, I had grown so much into myself. And I'm like, I don't want to get baptized. Um, I didn't tell her that specifically. I just said, I don't think I'm ready. I'm like, I don't think I'm ready, Mom. I don't think I'm ready. And, and it caused so many arguments between us. Um, we go to the meeting. As soon as we get in the car, she's, why don't you want to get baptized? Why don't you want to do this? Why are you doing this? Why are you, so-and-so, their son does this. Uh, this brother does this. He does this. And I'm like, Mom, I don't think I'm ready. I don't, I'm not ready for it. So like I said before, or she never pushed me into actually doing it. But once I said I was going to do it, she wouldn't let it go. So I still had time to get out of it. <laughs> but um, I got tired of the arguments. We argued every meeting. Every meeting we left, why don't you want to get baptized? And to the point where she was like, if you don't get baptized when um, Armageddon comes, uh, you won't be saved. Jehovah won't save you. If you don't get baptized, like in that moment, <laughs> like if it happened tomorrow, you wouldn't be saved. And I'm like, huh? Because I'm like, I'm 14. I thought there's a whole thing about your parents is over you and you be under your parent coattail and all that. So I was just like, I won't make it if I don't get baptized. Like I, it didn't make sense to me. But I was just like, get, get this monkey out my back because you're getting on my nerves. I'll get baptized. So. Once again, we didn't tell the family. You know, I have some family who are witnesses. And um, we went up to Birmingham. I got baptized on, a, I think, a special day assembly or something like that. It was three days before my 16th birthday. And um, I got baptized. Um, whole time, I was freaked out because I was like, there's no changing rooms. 
Like, what the hell is this? I'm like, I'm not about to get undressed in front of all these men. I don't know these men. And um, I found a stall. So I was the only they had one stall. I found a stall. Man, I was saying, God, I was the those first changing one rooms. Uh, yeah, you, nobody you told me in, that. Mm-mm. In an organization with as much abuse as they have that goes on inside it, man, those changing rooms and everything, they don't tell you what you're going into. It's 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 not it's weird. Yeah, they didn't tell me that. No, I was very uncomfortable. And I'm like, I'm gay, but I ain't that gay. I'm like, I I don't want to see none of y'all. Y'all ain't about to see none of me. So I changed very quickly and walked out. I think everybody else had already changed. Because I was like, I don't want to be around anybody. Like, I don't want to be around nobody like that. Um, So um, got baptized, got in the pool. They dunked me under. I was like, oh, the water's warm. I thought it was going to be cold for some reason. No, whatever. Um. I just remember the sisters and elders telling me, oh, once you get baptized, you'll be dipped down. You'll have a clean white slate and, you know, the angels will sing and you will make them rejoice in heaven. And I'm like, "Okay, cool. Uh, But they can see everything I do. Um, Okay, so (laughs) that kind of made me uncomfortable. (laughs) And then um, I just remember I got baptized and I got I was just like. I feel the same. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm still gay. <laughs> but I was just like, oh, I have a clean slate now. Um, but I wasn't, like, worried about progress in what I was going to do in the Kingdom Hall. I was worried about, I forgot to bring lotion. And it's winter time or fall time. It's cold. And I just got into a pool. And I'm black. And I am ashy from my head to my toe. <laughs> and I have to still stay here and continue being at this meeting. While my hands are white as snow. So that was the biggest thing in my head. Like everybody's like, oh, congratulations. You get you get back in your suit, my little ranky dink suit. And like, oh, congratulations, brother. You're brother, brother. And I'm just like, stop shaking my hand. You're making it worse. Um, I'm like asking sisters, oh sister, do you have some hand lotion or anything? And they're like, oh no, I don't have any. I was like, what the hell? So I went the rest of the meeting. <sighs> dry as a bone and ashy and upset and i was like what the hell did i just do i just got baptized and in my head i knew about this fellowshipping i knew about all of this it didn't compute to me that now i can be this fellowship now i could be kicked out i guess because like i said before my mom was my authority i didn't look to anybody else's authority so whatever she said went so i didn't i didn't think of oh if i do Something now they can kick me out and then I can, won't be able to talk to her. I didn't think about that before. Um, I felt like they got me, <laughs> like they got me in the cage and closed the door and threw away the key. And I was like, God damn it, man! And then I was like, I'm I'm gay. Like I I like boy. I I find men attractive. What am I gonna do? So I started thinking. I'm like, I'm gonna get this fellowship at some point. Um, beforehand, I knew if I ever got baptized, I would get this fellowship because they were like, you got to marry a sister. And I was like, these sisters look miserable and I do not like them. I do not want to marry a sister. I would be so upset if I had to marry a sister. And she was like, we have to do family study tonight. Oh God, do I have to? Like, I already got to deal with my mom. She's my mom. She's telling me to do. I have a wife. And she's like, we have to, you have to be the spiritual head. I don't want to be nothing. So I was like, I'm not marrying no Jehovah Witness woman. And that was when I was young. So I was like, I'm going to get this fellowship probably for that. <laughs> um, did you, can I ask, did, so, on any level, did you, just because you said something earlier, and I know I've heard this from others, did you on any level <sighs> hope or expect maybe just hope that mm. if you got baptized, it would somehow, you know, you come up out of the water and you'd be transformed in some way. And maybe you wouldn't be gay. I don't know if I thought specifically that I wouldn't be gay. I just thought once I got baptized, my slate is clean. I remember I was thinking my slate is all the stuff I did up to this point. I have a blank sheet of paper. That's how it was expressed to me. Um, and also the, the angels rejoice when there's a new brother. So, so maybe I can change it. So the, the slate is wiped clean and I can go into Justin 2.0. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think I think I knew I would not be able to change how I felt okay. because I realistically I was like, I'm gay. I know I'm gay. I can't change this. Even though they say, oh, you can do this and this, or you can do... I was like, that's bullshit. I was like, I'm gay, okay? It's not going to change. It's just going to change how I live my life. So am I just going to suppress it and just not get married and just be a Jehovah's Witness? Or am I going to trick some girl into marrying me and starting a dysfunctional family? Or am I just going to kill myself? Because at some point I got to the point where I was like, I was so upset and I felt so trapped, um, not with just the witnesses, but just in my family, with my mom and my brother, they started becoming um, kind of like dark forces to me in my head, as in like, I was extremely unhappy and I had suicidal ideations of, you know, just ending it. But I was like, I'm not going to do that. That ain't an option for me. So I was like, either I'm going to live my life, how I'm going to live it, or I will just end it. It was black and white for me. As they have their black and white thinking, that was the black and white thinking for me. Uh, it was no other option for me. I wasn't going to sit here and force myself into marrying somebody that I knew I didn't wasn't attracted to. I may like him, but I'm not attracted to you. Um, or even potentially you in a starting. Place. Yeah, it did. And it, it does it for a lot of, I guess, people too. Um, the, the good thing is, though, that I didn't have my stepdad. He wasn't in it. So I didn't have that pressure. It was just my mom. Um her pressure and she wasn't a pioneer she wasn't anything she was just rank, regular rank and file um just like the rest of them um so it kind of also freaked me out that once i got baptized they were like oh well you're a baptized male now so your mom has to you know when you study she if she's gonna do the prayer she's gonna have to wear a head covering or when you're out in service you're gonna have to lead the group i said um no i'm 15 years old um, these women are very skilled and know what they're doing. They're strong women. They don't need to cover their head for me. Um, like I was completely like, that's dead. I'm not doing that. And I remember my friend's mom one time, she he was leading the field service group. And I think I had just got baptized. I can't remember, but, um, she put a little scarf on her head and was doing the Bible text, daily text or whatever. And I remember I asked my mom, I was like, did she put down her head because I'm here? And I just remember how I felt icky. I just felt disgusted. Like That's not fun. No, I was just like, like she's a grown woman. She's been doing this longer than I've been alive. I'm like, she don't have to show any respect to me as a male. I'm like, who the f*** am I? I'm just here. I barely don't want to be here. But I'm happy they didn't make me do it because I sure wouldn't do it. I would not. So they have to do it. And I think they knew that. They think they, I think they knew that. I was very um I was very blunt in there's things that I don't like doing or I would not do. So they knew not to ask me. Um but it just it tripped me out and it freaked me out. My mom did it one time after I got baptized. She was leading the study and she, I don't know what she did. She put something on her head. I was looking at her. I was just like, "Woman, if you don't take this damn thing off your head, I am your child. What are you talking about? Like, I don't care. I'm not. I'm not a man. I'm a boy. <laughs> you a grown ass woman." So she did that one time and then she was like, "Yeah, I'm not doing that again." It just made me feel. I don't know, because I'm, I'm the baby in the family, and I always felt like I'm seen as the baby. So to be go from a baby to a man, like they see me as a man, they see me as the head of something, it made me feel disgusted. <laughs> I felt icky. I just, I don't know, I felt dirty. It just, I didn't like it. Um, so I'm like, you strong yeah, women. Well it it's, it suddenly puts you in a position that you know that you don't necessarily belong in just because you got baptized like yeah. i i remember having to lead out the field service group being like i don't know 14 15 or whatever cuz no brothers showed up and i'm like i can't even drive how am i sitting here telling all these grown women how where they're supposed to go and 
arranging mm-hmm. car groups and all this stuff. And th- I also knew they hated me for it. Yeah. Uh, they did not like me that I was doing it. And that was uncomfortable too. It's like, man, this whole situation sucks. I, I don't want to be here and they don't want me here. I just feel like they force you into a role that yeah. you're too immature to hold. Like at my age now, I would be okay. You know, I'm a grown man now. I'm like, okay, I'll do that. You know, ladies, let's do this. But I'm like, I'm a child. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, some. Of, I'm younger than some of their children or grandchildren. And I just felt like, I felt like I was being put in a place because of my sex. And it just felt like... It just felt weird to me, and I just, I didn't like it. I was just like, I don't like that. I'm like, y'all are grown, independent, strong women. Y'all can do this stuff on your own. Um, my friend would lead the group sometime though, so I would get. To, he's younger than me. He's a few years or a few months younger than me, and he would sit up front and lead the group and do it. And I'm just looking at him. I'm like, yeah, bro, you take it. You could do it. You do it. I'm not doing this shit, but you could do it. And um. It just was weird. I don't. I didn't like it. And then we were getting after I got baptized. You know, they have the meetings maybe after the um, the current ministry school and service meeting. They'll say, "Oh, baptized brothers, come in, and we're going to talk about this, this, this." And it's weird because my mom and my dad are with me, and they can't come in. They have to go. My dad and my mom. They are like, "Oh, we'll see you in the car." And I'm like. Huh? I'm like I'm a fifth. I'm uh, sixteen at the time. I'm like sixteen. What are you talking about? I'm like, how do I have more position or more? Um, I guess access to hear things than my both of my parents do. And I'm like, my mom really believes it. I'm like, I believe it, but to a point. <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out, but I can't put my finger on it. But I was just like, something ain't right here. Um, but I just remember it'd be like, all right, I'll see y'all in the car. Their teenage son just going in with all these grown men and other teenagers who've been baptized. And I get to be privy to something that they who actually believe it or are the head as a man can't even listen to. And I'm like, this shit, I was like, this shit is weird. Oh, I don't like this. Um, but it was kind of interesting because I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> I kind of get to listen to see what's going on. You know, what's tea, boo? What's tea? What's happening? So I'm like listening and I'm like, okay, this shit is still boring. And I was just like, they're not telling us nothing interesting. I was just like, what? we're having a gathering here and this and there. And this sister's going to bring this and we're going to do this. Or the circuit overseer is coming and we need to do this. I'm like, okay, this is the same stuff. What is new? So once there was nothing new, I was just like, I'm not interested in going. I think the next time they would call it, I'd be like, Mama, I'm going home. I don't know what you're talking about. I got homework to do. <laughs> it's late at night. I gotta go to school tomorrow. What are you what are you talking about? It's 10 o'clock now. I was like, I don't I don't wanna talk to nobody. I don't wanna sit behind. I wanna go to bed so I can get up in the morning. So <laughs> getting baptized. And I felt like after I got baptized, it just went downhill from there too. <laughs> just kept going down are you saying every time you progress spiritually it goes downhill (laughs) it seems to be that that way i think it's because i was naturally getting older so the older i got the more responsible i got the more mature i got the more questions i had the more things i realized that i didn't when i was younger Mm -hmm. so from the time i started at 13 to 16 so much has changed. I'm a whole different person now. And um, I just, we moved to a house um, basically in the town that our kingdom hall was in. So I didn't have to change kingdom halls. And I stayed in my school because my parents just let me go. I wasn't supposed to, but I was like, I'm not leaving here because like these are my friends. I cannot lose anybody else because I, I had friends in the neighborhood I would play with, but I can't play with them anymore because I don't live there. I'm not going. I'm not going to a school. I'm too old for this now. I can't go to a new school, so I'm isolated. I'm extremely isolated. Um, I had no friends to talk to outside of school. I had no friend. I wasn't supposed to have friends in school. I couldn't go hang out with them. I would basically come home and stay in bed, close my door, and stay in my room for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And hours. Um, 
I got, I think I slipped into a depression. <laughs> Not think, I know I slipped into a depression. I was so unhappy. Um, I was miserable because I was such a social person before. And I was just like, I feel like they forced me to become an introvert when I was born an extrovert. And I was shy, but I can still talk to people. You know, I can, you know, you know, I can mess around with people and make them laugh or do whatever. But it kind of like shut me up and just I felt like I was in a jail cell. Um, I only saw my mom, my dad, and whenever my brother came, which I prayed every day, he would not. <laughs> and she would always go get him on the weekends. I'm like, why can't you leave his ass at school? Like, let him stay there. Why he keep bringing him here? And we would fight. He would cuss me out. He would call me out all types of names. It got to the point where him and my mom would get into it. He would cuss her out, call her all types of names. And I'm just like, I don't like this atmosphere. My peace is gone. My peace is disrupted. Um, they're fighting all day, night. It's my mom, my brother, my brother, my dad, my dad, my mom. My, everybody's fighting each other. And I'm just in my room in a little cocoon listening to music. I fell heavily into music around that time. So I was listening to everything. And my mom always be like, make sure you, you know, you pay attention to what you're listening to. You, I'm like, uh-huh, okay, mommy. And I turn on my Eminem because I'm like, I like the answer. <laughs> I'll turn yeah. on my Nicki, uh, my Nicki Minaj, my Beyonce. I love Beyonce. I fell in love with Beyonce around that time. And um, music became healing to me to listen to because I felt like things I couldn't say or express, I could get out through listening through the music just in my head. So that kind of helped me cope with it. Um, but it was just anger. Every time anger, um, cussing, yelling, uh, I'm getting cussed out for something. My dad's getting cussed out for something. My brother's cussing my dad out for something. My dad is upset and crying and my mom's upset it's just it was just hell like the whole time we lived there and I was just like this is what hell feels like I guess <laughs> and I'm just like I'm not happy I am baptized I don't feel any different I'm scared I'm terrified out of my mind because I'm gay and I know I'm gay and what will this mean will my mom accept me I know she won't accept me mommy she only likes she only believes in Jehovah's Witnesses, so whatever they say goes. Um, around that time, my mom had a back surgery. And this is when things kind of got really bad uh, financially for us. It's just mentally for all of us. Um, they found a spot on her lung, and they wanted to do a biopsy. So instead of getting a second opinion... She just went to the doctor and they performed this huge surgery on her. They cut her from like her shoulder all the way down her back. And she had a huge gash in her where they put the scope in and they took a biopsy. So they basically cut her halfway open and then just like glued her back together. And um, she was in so much pain. She already had fibromyalgia and she was in so much pain. And my sister, who was in school for physical therapy, she came down to help her. Um, so I had my sister there. But my mom was out of work for like a month, I think. And um, the brother and sister who were my friend's parents, they were privy to everything. They went to the hospital to visit her and talk to her. And uh, my mom told me that she was upset and she was crying and she was wondering why the elders weren't there. And she was telling her, why are the elders here? Shouldn't the elders be here for me? Why are they here? They just abandoned me and da da da. And she just went off. And um, my mom, a private per person, she's very private. So I was kind of in my head thinking, I'm like, mom, um, you didn't tell them that you were having surgery. It kind of came out of the blue too. Her mom barely knew and she was upset about that. Um, she came to my granny and um, I was like, you didn't tell them, you know? And that's what the sister told them. Like, they didn't know. But I'm thinking, I'm like, well, you knew when you had told them that she was having surgery as well. Because isn't that how the rumor mill worked? Because I'm like, when y'all have some hot gossip about me, you definitely want to spread it around. But when it's something, you know, important, they didn't say anything. And like I said, that family particularly, they were, they weren't, you know, well off or anything. They were like normal. They, you know... They did what they did to survive, which is fine. But we had some elders in there. 
had some, you know, they was they was paid. They had some money now. And um she was just upset about that. And I, I was just at the time I was just like, Well, mama, you didn't tell them. So, you know, you can't be mad at them for not knowing. They they love us and all this and that. They be there for us. And so she's out of work for a month. She's not working. My dad, like I said, he worked minimum wage. <sighs> It was, she was supposed to recover for like three months. I think she went back after the first month. So she'd been cut open, had a huge gas to her, and had to go back to work in less than a month, I believe, because bills. Um, and it was the dead of winter. It was December, November, December, and it was extremely cold that winter. And um, our gas went out because they couldn't afford a gas bill. So we didn't have heat. Uh, we couldn't cook. We couldn't take showers. We couldn't do anything. And um, I remember the family, my friend's family, his dad brought over space heaters for us. <laughs> so he brought over like two space heaters for our rooms. And I was like, that's nice. Now I think back, I'm like, damn, you couldn't have just paid the bill. <laughs> you couldn't have just helped pay the bill <laughs> or get the money up for somebody, you know, not necessarily them, but like, you know, get the money up. Cause I mean, the bill was probably like a hundred dollars. I was like, y'all couldn't have scraped up a hundred dollars, you know? Cause I'm like, we still can't eat. <laughs> we can't cook food. Or take a shower. Um, yeah. Or take a shower. Oh my God. It was the worst. I had to, we had to go get um, a coffee pot, fill it up with water, put it on a coffee pot go to the sink and bathe in the sink, like take a bath in the sink. And it was the most uncomfortable thing. And um, food, we just ate out, I guess. I don't even remember. Uh, I do remember one day my parents at work and the sister came by, my friend's mom. And she just came out out of the blue, didn't say anything. She knocked on the door, I opened it. I'm like, hey, sister. And she walks in, she has all this food. She has all these crock pots and stuff. And I'm like... What is this? I was like, did you call my mom and tell her? She's like, no, I didn't call her. She was like, here's some food for y'all. And, and I was like, that's so sweet. So like in the darkness, there's always some light. And for some reason, they were always the light <laughs> that came out. I don't know why nobody else was there, but they were always there. Probably because they were just so close to us. And um, I mean, she brought crop pots and pots of food, lots of food. And I was just like, oh, this is really nice. And I know my mom. They appreciated it because they were working hard, trying to get everything corrected. And um, shortly after that, we got a call that my cousin, um, who lived in Montgomery at the time, had been shot and killed by by some person. And uh, my mom was really close to him because my mom had my sister and his mom, my uncle's wife, had him like a month apart, so they're really close. She rates, she, you know, they would come spend the summers with us. He was only 24 at the time. He had a son, and she flipped out. I've never seen her act in such a way. Because I had my uncle calling, he was like, hey, uncle. And he was like, hey, your mom there? Yeah. He's like, can I talk to her? Sure. He didn't tell me. And she gets the phone. I give her the phone. A few minutes later, she's screaming. And I'm thinking... She's in pain because of her surgery. She just had the surgery and she would have really bad back spasms to where she couldn't move and she would be in so much pain. And she would scream. She was all on the floor screaming. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? Like, what is wrong? Like, me and my dad run into the room, like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And she's just like, you can't even hear what she's saying. She's just like so slurred and crying and screaming. And I was like, I've never seen her like that ever. Cause she's a very put together person. She's strong. So I've never seen her like that. So I'm like, is she hurt? Like, did something pop? <laughs> like, what the hell is happening? And, and she muttered it that, you know, my cousin had been killed a few hours ago. And I was just like, what? Like, you know, what? So I never experienced somebody being killed or murdered in our family. So I was like, you know, what? Like, what does this mean? Like, what is what? what happened, you know? And she's just hysterical, can't get anything. My dad calls the brother and sister, my friend's parents. And my his dad just left from having study with them. He went back home and he called and was like, can y'all please come and help her? Cause we, we can't do anything. We don't know what's, you know, how to help her. And they both came over 
um, a few minutes later, and they talk to her, like, with both of them in the dining room, and she's just, like, you know, just hysterical the whole time. And I was just like, you know, in the darkest times, they always showed up. <laughs> so all the times that I could think of um, where we were going through things, well, they were the always there. They were around, right? Like you said. Yeah, they were the people that was always there to help or like to make it better or, you know, try to make it better or at least just being there. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think I still have a lot of respect for them. Like I said, they're just good people. They're just yeah. good people in a shitty situation, but they're good people. Um, so that was kind of tough to go through. I mean, we were already going through what we were going through. We didn't have heat. We didn't have, we had to take showers or whatever in the sink. It was, and then he died unexpectedly and Everybody's distraught. She's distraught. She's in pain. She's she's like having these flare ups, back spasms. She's just. I was just like, this is too much. <laughs> this is too much for me to handle. Um, so we end up getting out of that place and going back to an apartment that we lived in before we moved there. Um, so things kind of started getting a little bit better. I was in the neighborhood again with my friends that I had grew up with, but. I have been isolated for so long and it become expected of me to only just be in my room that I could, I still couldn't go outside. Even though I have used to go outside and play with them before or do whatever, I just stayed in my room again. And, um, it got a little bit better, but not that much better. Still mentally, I was just drained. And I was just like, how can I get how can I get out of this <laughs> um, without losing my family? Because at that point, I was just like, all right, I'm going to be this fellowship at some point. And if I get this fellowship, my mom will not speak to me. And I'm like, how can my mom not speak to me? It just wouldn't compute to me. And I'm just, I'm her baby, you know, I'm her son, I'm her child. How could she not speak? speak to me and I'm just like freaking out because I'm like she's my mom like she's like if anything happens she's my world like I couldn't do you know and we weren't even getting along at the time we were definitely not getting along I would come home and had a good day at school you know she usually would be at work so I wouldn't have to talk to anybody I'd come home go to my room do homework she's at home she has an attitude you don't know how to speak to anybody I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, mom. You know, I'm not used to you being here. You know, I had a good day, though, you know. And it's just like, she'd be like, I'll knock your head through that TV. And I'm just like, all right, um, that sounds very violent. I'm going to go to my room now. <laughs> I'm like, I think you're on one. Uh, I'm good. I don't think you are. But, you know, I'm just going to go to my room. And we're just going to call this a night, okay? And she comes to my room and just be like, I don't know who you think you are or who you talking to or those worldly people that you talk to at your school and all this and that. But you ain't this and you ain't that. And I'm going to pray for you and I hope that y'all will help heal your heart and do all this. And I'm just like, girl, what are you talking about? And I was just like, I just remember she like closed the door and I just be like, crying like just leave me alone please just leave me alone like don't come back just stay gone stay where you at i stay here you stay there just please leave me alone don't talk to me <laughs> so that's where our relationship really took a hit because i was just like don't she just became very aggravated and she took all her anger out on me and i guess because i wouldn't say anything my brother and her and my brother would go toe to toe. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would stay away from all of them. All the three of them, I would stay away from as much as I possibly could. If I could lock my door and stay in my room, I would as much as I could. Um, so with that is isolation and depression and anxiety. And you're just unhappy. And I'm finding out I'm gay. And I'm like, this is a sin. I can't be gay. Uh, but I am gay. So what are we going to do about this? And I'm just like, I'm just going to have to suppress it for right now because I can't get kicked out of my house. If I feel like if I tell her, she'll go kick me out or she's going to be like, we got to talk to the elders. And I'll be like, 
No, I'm not talking to the elders because if they talk to me and they're like, oh, we can help you, I'm going to cuss their ass out. And that's not going to be good for either of us. <laughs> so that's where I was at. Um, I was like, I'm not going to tell nobody what I'm like, what they're not going to tell me what to do. They're not going to tell me who I am. I know me. I know my feelings. They're not going to negate any of that stuff. They're not going to do any of it. So I'm not even going to give them a chance. So I'm like, I'm just going to have to suck it up and just live here in hell until I can leave. <laughs> um, I was looking at schools. I was in high school looking at going to Auburn University. All my friends wanted to go there. I was like, I want to go to Auburn University. Um, and I remember she was like, you're not going to go to no university. I was just like, why not? Because <laughs> I'm always like, why? Tell me why. You're not going to go to no university. You can go to a um, technical college or like a, you know, tech school or whatever. Get a trade. I'm like, I don't want to do that, though. I want to go to a four-year school and I want to get a degree. Thank you. Um, she was never against me not going to school. Like, she wanted me to go, but she never said it. Until after I graduated high school. So leading up to it, she never spoke about college other than you're not going to a university. She wanted me to stay local, stay at house, go to a college, two-year college or whatever. Which is different uh, from what I've heard a lot of. Um, I know my friends definitely, they were told they were going to get trades. But in my family, we were different. My cousin who got baptized uh, with her little boy. Um, she she went to school. She had degrees after she got baptized. Um, my aunt, she was a teacher. Um, my great aunt, she was a teacher. Um, and her daughter became a teacher. So she went to school. She stayed at home, but she went to school and became a teacher. So we had witnesses in the family that were educated. They went to college um, and were educated. And my cousin's father was an elder. So I was like, I don't know how that worked out, but... It worked out for her, so lucky her. Um, but I was like, no, I'm getting the hell up out of here. I ain't going to stay here after I graduate high school. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to stay on a dorm. Get me the hell out. She's like, no, you're not going to that. I said, fine, whatever. Um, abruptly, at the end of my sophomore year, we moved. After I, it ended, we moved back to Georgia. And... um. Stay, I stayed with my mom's sister for a little bit until they found a place. And I was so pissed off <laughs> that they moved me because I moved so much as a child that when I got to this school, I had all my friends. I had known them since we were young. I was like, these are my people that I grew up with. I want to graduate high school with them. And she told me, I won't let, I won't, you know, move you. I promise you can stay here. We'll, you'll graduate with them. Sophomore year, they pick up. Three weeks later, we move. Don't have a house here. They transferred their jobs because their jobs were easy to transfer. We just picked up and moved. I don't know what was going on. I kind of look back and I'm like, mm, well, they broke a lease. So I'm like, what the hell was happening? You know, what, what was going on? Um, I feel like one morning I woke up and they were talking. It was a Saturday morning and I couldn't really hear what they were saying, but whatever it was, it sounded troubling. Or like they was like discussing something. I really don't know what it was. I want to know because I want to know is that whatever that was, is that why we had to leave? And another thing, my brother had moved to Georgia a few months before and was living in Atlanta doing whatever. So I was like, is she trying to follow him? Because I'm, like, I'm trying to get the hell away from him. Um, so we move abruptly at the end of my, the day after I ended school, we moved here. And I was pissed off. I cried while we were leaving. I cried, I cried, I cried. And she turned around. She was like, what the fuck are you crying about? And I was like, I'm crying because I'm I'm going to miss everybody. Even the people in the congregation, they had become my family. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be a witness probably forever. But I was just like, they're sweet people. Like, they... This congregation, they were actually sweet people. I don't know what's going on behind the scene now because I wasn't paying too much attention. For sure. But for me, they were sweet to me. They were good to me. They made me laugh. They did activities. You know, they were uh, they were a fun haul. We didn't do parties or nothing, but like you know, they were they were they were cool. You know, um, 
And I miss my friends. I was I'm not going to get to graduate with them. I'm not going to get to walk on stage with them. Like, that's all, all I wanted to do. And I was just crying. She didn't care. And we moved here. Um, started going to a new hall. And I was pissed off. And despite them, I was like, fuck it. If you're going to do this to me, I'm just going to be gay. So I was like, I don't know nobody here. I'm just going to act, not act on it, but I'm just going to start talking to men. So I had got these apps or whatever. I had this app called um, Kick, which is like a messenger. Mm -hmm. And um, I had this app where you can read like erotic stories because I like reading stuff and I'm like, I'm a little, I'm sex positive. So I was like, I'll read, you know, some stuff. I'm not supposed to be, but I'm reading some stuff and I'm just like, oh, these stories are interesting. Find out there's like a forum where people are talking. I'm like, oh, there's guys on here. This would be a nice way. Oh, okay. He's a pedophile. <laughs> Don't talk to him. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. What does this mean? What does pedo mean? Like, you know, I didn't know what pedo meant. And I see that all over. They're like, oh, he's pedo, pedo. I'm like, what is pedo? Oh, he's a pedophile. Okay. We're not going to talk to that. Um, I'm 16 still. No, no creeps, no creepies. Um, so I was just like, that's where I started actually acting on talking to other men. Like, okay, I'm gay. This is what it is. They pissed me off. They took me away from my home. So I'm just going to do what I do. And um, we started going to a hall. And this hall was different because I guess in the metro area or where there are bigger cities, the halls have multiple congregations. So we were one of like four congregations that shared that same hall. And one was a Spanish speaking congregation. And there was two other ones. And every year we changed times that we would start. So I wasn't used to that. I think we used to start at what, 10? Be out by 12. Yep. So would you like to see opportunities for people that have been victims of financial control? You know, really like all of us that left a cult that have been discouraged from education ambition, and financial literacy? Uh, would you like to see those individuals have resources available to get help? Wouldn't it be nice to see job opportunities available for ex-Jehovah's Witnesses who have been isolated from even knowing what those opportunities might be? Do you have a small business, but maybe you don't know how to market it or put it in front of the right people? Or maybe you have a hard time selling what you have or what you do because you've been told your whole life that you're not good enough. Are you struggling because you have no network to work within and so your opportunities are very limited? What if you had access to help you to actually manage the money you made so that you kept more of it and maybe had some chance at actually retiring with dignity someday? If these things sound good to you, I'm looking for people that are looking for such opportunities. I'm looking for people in the community that are recruiters, marketing professionals, employers, and those who want to be helped in these areas. And if you're not in the community and you listen to this and you're like, hey, I have a business and, and I think I could help in some way, you know, feel free to reach out. Please go to xjwhelp.com, again, exjwhelp.com, or I'm calling this The Uprising Project. So you can also go to theuprisingproject.com for more information and to apply to be included in some exciting new opportunities that I'm working very hard to bring into the community. Together, we can all rise up. They would have two meetings in a day, two or three meetings in a day, and one would be on Saturday, actually. So one congregation would meet on Saturday, and then the others would meet on Sunday, and we would change times. I used to pray that we had the first, because if we had the first, we could oversleep and missed the meeting. <laughs> and we had our meeting, I think the latest started at like four o'clock. I was pissed that entire year because that meant we had so much time to make it to our meeting. <laughs> and that meant we had to go. But if we had the 10 o'clock meeting, oh, she overslept. She'd be like, we overslept. She she may be like, we'll go to the two o'clock meeting. And we ain't gonna go. We're not gonna go to no two o'clock meeting. But if we had that four o'clock meeting, God damn, man. I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to have to get up and go. Um, the hall was different there, too. It had windows, but it was dark. <laughs> I don't know how that worked. Um, the people there weren't as friendly or welcoming. 
um, the elders and the elders' wives were definitely on some of the stuff, for lack of a better word. Um, I did have, they had some kids around my age that I went to school with, and one was actually in my class. Um, I'll say her name, my friend Nina. Um, her and her brother were close in age to me. Um, me and her were in the same grade. He was a great ahead of us. And um, I didn't really get to know them the first year. Uh, I thought they were kind of stuck up because <laughs> she's a pretty girl. She's a very pretty girl. And I was like, oh, she thinks she's cute. So I was like, nah, uh-uh, mm -mm. I don't like her. She, I was like, she thinks she's cute. She, she thinks she all that. And I'm like, I go to her school. I go to school and like, I see her in the classroom. I'm like, she got a boyfriend? I was like, oh, no. Uh-uh. Like, I don't, mm -mm. I'm not messing with her. Um, I think they wanted me to be friends with her brother. And I was just like, he's cool too. Like, he's cool. Um, but like I said, I gravitate to girls more as friends. Um, there was another, another girl there. Um, <laughs> I hope she listens to this. Cause if she sees this, she's going to laugh. She <laughs> was such a goody two shoes. She was like the perfect, like, I don't think her dad was elder or her stepdad was elder, but she was like the perfect little JW girl. And we all thought like we can't do nothing around her because she'll tell on us. She was homeschooled. She sang the loudest in the hall. <laughs> her family sat up front. They sang the loudest. And like she would talk to me sometimes. And I'm like, okay, cool. But I'm not really vibing with the people here. Um, I think it was a whole year went by and I didn't vibe with them. We didn't do anything. They tried to do activities with me and I was like, mm, something ain't right in the pudding here. Um, y'all got some issues. As in like, y'all got some ego issues. Like the elders wives thought they were hot shit and they thought they was on this pedestal and the elders thought exactly the same. And I didn't like that. They weren't humble people like I was used to um, at my old hall. And it just had a dark, spirit to the whole place. You walk in, it's just dark. I mean, there were some good people there. Like, there's always some good people. There's a handful of good people somewhere. Somewhere. It was the one sister that reminded me of my great-grandma that had passed, and I loved her to death just because she reminded me of her. She's a sweet, old, nice lady. So, a year went by. Didn't make any friends. Didn't really talk to anybody there. More, um, the Accredited Ministry School, more throwing up. <laughs> oh, yeah. All, all the same JW activities. Yes. And um, talking to boys online, I've found some forums or whatever, started having little boyfriends online. So while we're in the meeting, I'm looking out the window thinking about my boyfriend <laughs> that I've never met, but we like FaceTime or whatever. We just chat. Um, so... We were at a um, convention, and the weird thing, too, was in Alabama, we had our conventions in the summer, so I wouldn't have to miss school, but here we had our conventions, like, the second week of August, and we start school usually the first, like, August 1st, so, like, that Friday after the first week, I had to miss school already, which was weird to me, so I ended up walking around and meeting the girl, my friend, um, who everybody thought was a goody two-shoe and would tell on us. She started talking to me and walking around, and then um, my friend Nina came along, and we started walking around, and we shared the same French class. So we were in the same class, so I knew her a little bit. So I was just like, oh, okay, you know, you're cool. We started talking, and, like, we became best friends, me and Nina. And um, eventually, me and the other girl became best friends. Uh, she has a story, <laughs> a very interesting story I'm sure to tell, too. Um, but she was kind of the person that kind of helped me break down my walls. Because even though I thought she was such a goody two-shoes, she was doing or going through her own stuff. And we were kind of going through similar things and didn't know it. So she was confiding to me, oh, I have a boyfriend or whatever. I was like, oh, you got a boyfriend? No goody two-shoes over here? And I mean... <laughs> But uh, she ended up coming out to me as well a few years later. And I was like, yo, we're going through the same thing. I didn't know, you know. I thought I was like the unicorn. I thought there was no other gay Jehovah Witness but me. 
<laughs> of course, I thought it's I to, to make you feel that alone. Exactly, and I was like, I'm the only gay Jehovah's Witness. I don't, I haven't seen anything else where there's any other gay men, and I would hate it when they would have Watchtower studies or whatever, and they would talk about gay people, and I'm just sitting there like. These people are so homophobic, and I am so uncomfortable, and I'm so cringe. And early on, I was terrified because I was just like, "What am I gonna do?" Like, but the older I got, I was just like, "No, nah, that's not true." <laughs> like, oh, you can control how you feel, or you can do. That. I was like, "No, nah, that's not true." Mm -mm. Scratch that out next. Um, what else you gotta say? Um, but it used to be so awkward, especially when we would have conversations with the family. Um, the rest of my family pretty open they don't care but of course the jehovah witness part of my family they're like oh yeah it's a choice they choose to do that and my granny was telling my mom and my aunt was telling my cousin their sisters and they were telling their daughters like oh there's studies and all this and that and you know they're just born this way and i remember sitting there like hopeful i was like oh yeah, i'm born this way oh they've done studies on this they've done studies on this you say so I'm not crazy. I'm not, you know, choosing to do this. And then we get into the car and my mom and cousin are like, oh, you know, you know, they're just worldly people. They don't know these people. They just choose to do this. And I'm just in the back seat. Like, you go figure it out one day. <laughs> it's going to come out eventually. I don't know what to tell you, but it's going to come out. Um, but during that time, I felt a little bit more free just because I was actually being myself. I was living a double life, of course, but I feel like it forces you to live a double life. Again, um, the double life, the second life being the real life, who you really are, who you really are at least wanting to be or wanting to experiment with to see if it if it fits who you are versus the witness life, which is the true double life, the one that you're forced to go Exactly. Because, I mean, I was breaking down and changing who I was to fit what they wanted me to be. So they always preached about this double life, this double life, you know, living the double life. And I remember I would be like, oh, my God, how can people live the double life? I'm terrified. You know, I'm a little scared. I don't want to live a double life um, until I got older. And I'm just like, oh, this is what they meant. Yeah, something ain't right. <laughs> Something's not right in the pudding here. Um, and I, I felt like it made me so judgmental. Because before I was not. I was very open-minded. And I feel like, you know, as long as you're not hurting nobody, you living your life, you do what you do. It ain't that don't affect me. Um, that's my stand on things. But I remember there was a time where in my old congregation back in Alabama, I was skipping or going back. A sister got pregnant. She got pre she got baptized the same time as my my mom did, and um she got pregnant. And I remember thinking like, you know, I think she got reproved. I don't know if she got the fellowship, but I remember her after the meeting. They announced that she was in the back sobbing. I think she had to be reproved because everybody came and kind of like hugged her and all that. But she was sobbing, crying, and I was just like, why? Like, why is she? You know, why is she upset? You know. Like, what does this mean? Reproof. <laughs> Mind you, my cousin been reproved so many times with all the shit she's done. <laughs> I was just like, why? Um, and I felt so judgmental, like, like looking at her. I'm like, oh, she's pregnant. She got pregnant by a worldly person. Like, what the hell? Why did she do that? They're incredibly judgmental. Yes, I know. And I was just like, why would she do that? Like, didn't she know better? a child telling a grown woman this. Mm -hmm. And so she had the baby and I remember it was new. We had a new baby in the kingdom hall and I was like, oh my God, a baby. I love babies. And I remember me and my friend had walked over and I was probably just a child. It'd be stupid. And I just remember I was so awkward. I didn't know how to be like, oh, your baby's so cute. I was just like, I pointed to it. And I was like, did it hurt when you had her? <laughs> And she was just like, yeah. I was just, I look back at it now. I'm like, oh my God. I wish I could have been like, oh my God, girl, your baby's so cute. Like, oh yeah. You know, and there was a lot of double life going on. Now that I look back at it, all of them were living double lives. Yeah. All and of them. Especially the kids. Forced into a mold that is 
not very human. <laughs> exactly. And so their humanity is going to come out in some ways, and then they're going to get shut down. Exactly. And um, I also forgot to touch on this. Um, the person that you had on the podcast before, he touched on it a little bit. I think they were family members of his, but there was a boy. His granddad was an elder, I think, in the hall. He played football at our school. I actually had him in some of my classes. He was a little bit older than me. He played football, and he went on to college to play football um, at Georgia Tech. And I remember thinking, I was like, how come he can do this? I asked my mom, like, because I used to want to play baseball. I used to want to play soccer. I used to want to have after-school activities. Uh, she let me join the French club, but I couldn't do anything afterwards. Um, and I was just remember, I was like, how come he can, his, dad, his granddad's an elder. I don't think his dad, his dad's passed now. But I was like, I don't think his dad's an elder, but he's probably just there. But that's probably why he's not an elder. But I was, his granddad's an elder, and they come into the hall. I'm like, how come he can play football? I can't do anything. And I don't know, I just felt like it was a double standard there. But uh, their family was cool, too. But <laughs> it just felt like a double standard. But um, back to Georgia. Um. I have a friend now, my friend Nina. Me and her, like, thick as these. I had another friend named Mia. She was a year younger than me. She actually lived in the apartments that we lived in, so I would hang out with her sometimes, too. But, like, me and um, Nina were, like, thick as these. We call each other twins. We look nothing like each other, but we just call each other twins because we're so close. And it kind of seemed like a light at the end of the tunnel because I'm, I got friends. I trust her. Like we're both, she was never baptized or anything. I think her brother may have been a unbaptized publisher or something like that, and he had been taken out or whatever for whatever reason. Um, but I felt like I found my friends, like my true friends, um, and they happened to be witnesses this time, which was interesting. But they weren't in it like the other ones were. Uh, we all had things that were going on <laughs> that our parents didn't know about at the time that we would all share with each other. And I'm just like, my mom would be like, those worldly people, those worldly people. I remember I told one of my friends that one time at school and she was like, she was so offended. She was like, what do you mean worldly people? And I was just like nonchalant. I was just like, you know, this is what they say, worldly people. I'm like, what? You're worldly. You're not a Jehovah's Witness. And she was just like, I take deep offense to that. Like, I'm not a worldly person. I go to church and da 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 And I'm just like, I thought about it. I was like, yeah. I'm like, so why do we call them worldly? I was like, these people are more wholesome than the Jehovah Witnesses kids that I go to school with. <laughs> or who I hang out with. I was like, I, the first time I was introduced to any drugs was from a Jehovah's Witness kid. Mm -hmm. Who I know, which I never did, because I was just, I didn't, I wasn't into that type thing. But they were the ones who introduced it to me. They went to the King Hall. Of course, I would never tell them that, but that's who brought that to me. And I was just like, no, thank you. I'm good. Just because I can make the decisions for myself. I don't have to have somebody else telling me what to do. So, so thank you. see now that Jehovah's Witnesses aren't all that they're cracked up to be. And you have oh, somebody yeah. else that you want to be. Exactly. And I just, I knew once I was, after I got baptized, I I knew something wasn't right. Like something just didn't feel right to me. Cause I'm just like, if these people are living their life, paying their taxes, doing whatever they do to mind their own business, why am I sitting here telling them that they're going to be destroyed? Mm -hmm. Because I know what y'all are doing. I know what you doing. I, and I know what they doing. And for me, if I was God, I would look and be like, okay, these people are okay. Y'all, y'all doing some shady shiesty business over here. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> I know of a story of I, I know of a story of an elder putting a hit out on somebody to have them killed so when I found that out I was just like yeah something ain't right here <laughs> I was like he had he put a hit out to have somebody killed I've heard of, I had those stories Infidelity, lots of infidelity. Um, personally, I hadn't heard anything of child abuse, as in sexual child abuse, uh, but it doesn't shock me. Um, well, again, that's usually handled heard behind it. the scenes, so we don't hear about it, right? Exactly, but I don't know anybody personally who yeah. went through that. Um, 
with anybody that I know of. And I'm sure it has happened, but I haven't had it happen to me or anybody that I knew. At least they haven't told me. But um, yeah, I have friends now and they were witnesses. So that was kind of a good thing. I guess the bad thing was they were girls. And so, you know, they were not supposed to be friends with girls like that. You, know, you could be friends with them, but, you know, if you're hanging around each other too much, oh, you know, what are y'all doing, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, we ain't doing nothing but talking shit. <laughs> we talking shit about all y'all. We While, we, while we're at the assemblies and at the hall, we ain't doing nothing but talking. I'm looking for her. She's looking for me. We about to go. We about to hang out, talk to her brother. You know, we just having a good time. So that was inter- interesting to me. As well as still noticing the congregation around me, um, that congregation is where I I notice infidelity, I notice possible abuse, I notice premarital sex that they were having, I notice a whole lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and what were you mostly where, because where, I, where were you going during all of this? So like you're. You're noticing the congregation isn't what you thought it was. And you know that yeah. you're not who everybody thinks you are to an extent. Mm-hmm. So how are you handling that in- internally? I didn't give it no expectations. After I left Alabama and moved to Georgia, I didn't give a rat's ass what I did. Um, I still had to do the... um. What is it? I had to do the theocratic ministry school, so I had to still give them, give them stupid talks. Um, I didn't comment. I stopped commenting. I basically just like retracted. So after I got baptized, I just went down here. I retracted because I was like, I don't like this. So they didn't have any expectations of me anyway, even though they were trying to get to know me. They started me to study with this brother. I guess he was young at the time. I don't know. He had a family. He was okay. But um, I remember I felt my inner self trying to come out and scream out to me so loud that I felt like it was me being unhumble and that it was me being, um, what is it? Bolsterous or it's you something like they used to say. And proud yes, haughty. Yes. Yeah. Because how dare you have a self? Exactly. And I, I felt my inner self telling me, this is bullshit. Get out of here. Go. And I was, I, I felt like you said haughty, like they used to say haughty, bolsterous, and all that Mm -hmm. good JW talk that I've forgotten now. And I would tell the person that I was studying with, I was like, you know, I feel like I'm so out of touch. And I keep praying to to God that I humble, that I pray for humility to humble myself. Like, Mm -hmm. I feel like I need to be humbled. But basically, that's me saying I need to shut up and get in line. <laughs> and I need to it was squash my, myself. Yeah, I need to squash myself. I need to make myself this small. And I look back at that now and I'm like, damn it, why didn't you just stop going or whatever? I don't know. But I felt that I think that was like a last ditch effort. And I was telling him that and he seemed like he didn't really care. He was just like, oh, okay, yeah, well, this verse. And I'm just like, bro, I'm trying to tell you, like, I feel like I feel like I'm better than this situation. And I know I'm not supposed to be. Or like I feel like I'm smarter than this situation and I'm not supposed to be. And I praying to dumb myself down, basically, to make myself quiet and not speak, shut up, look the other way to fall in line, to be humble. That was me saying, I pray for humility. He just didn't pay attention to it. And I was just like, I don't know what to do here. I was like, I feel like, because I would have thoughts and I'd be like, gay people, why why can't people be gay? Who gives a fuck? Or it'd be like, beards? Why the fuck can't you grow a beard? Or it'd be like, you know, if I want to date somebody that's, you know, not a witness, why can't I date? And I'd be like, oh, Justin, don't say that. Don't say that, Justin. You know, you're speaking out of turn, you gotta calm it down. And I pray for humility. I used to pray at night in my prayers, and I have very heartfelt prayers and be like, Jehovah, please keep me humble, keep me as your humble servant, and all this and that. And it was just bullshit. And it was me telling myself something's not right here. Um, but yeah, I have friends now that were in the congregation, 
they were on the outside, <laughs> which is where I was heading. So that was why we quit. I was say, so well. You're sitting here talking um, to me today. So at some point, you must have started listening to that inner voice. Uh, so, and, oh my God, that inner voice. <laughs> it's I'm sure it was getting really loud and cranked up. So, how do you start progressing to actually to that point of getting out of it all? So, um, it's kind of it was kind of abrupt <laughs> I don't, honestly i don't even know how it happened but um you know we went through school to finish out the school year i graduated high school i graduated actually across the street from where i live in it's a church a huge church and i was terrified that my mom would not let me graduate because it was at a church and she wouldn't let me go yeah I was in the beta club before in elementary school and they had initiations at a church and she would not let me go. So I couldn't be a part of the beta club. So that kind of crushed me. So I was terrified. I was like, God, please. when I found out that that's where they graduated, I was like, please don't let her say I can't go. Cause this is my graduation. Like I want to graduate high school. So I told her where I was and she went, she went and I went and we did. It. I mean, it's where all the, kids in our county graduate so sure. all jw kids have to go there so we all been there so i guess it's something that they are used to um so i know that was a big issue for me um i was terrified um but yeah i was pretty much i wasn't out even to my friends i wasn't out to any of them i wasn't out to the kids at school even though there was this one girl who kept telling me she's like justin you're gay and i'm like no i'm not Gay. I was like, I can't be gay. I'm a Jehovah's Witness. Or I'd be like, my sister's gay. I can't be gay. If I was gay, I would just be gay. And I was just like, God damn, girl, get off my back. Um, but no, she's sweet. She was very sweet. Um, she was trying to help me be myself, and I just couldn't. Mm -hmm. Um, so I graduated high school. I started work two weeks afterwards. And I remember I started work and I was working. I took Sundays off because yeah, I had to be at the meeting. And one Sunday, <laughs> Shortly after that, it probably wasn't even two weeks after I started working. It was a Sunday. Mom came in, wake me up, get me up to go to the kingdom hall. And I just said, no, I was just in bed. I said, I'm not going. Not to her, but just to myself. I was like, I'm not going. And I just stayed in bed. She came back. Justin, you need to get up. We need to go be, we're going to be late for the meeting. And I just stayed in bed. And she screamed and she yelled. And she's like, you going to make me late for this. And, da, 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 da. and I was just like, I'm not moving. I don't know what it was. I couldn't get up. I couldn't get out of bed. I went the Thursday night before. I couldn't get up the Sunday. I was just, I was mentally, I could not make myself go. So I stopped abruptly, just stopped. And she raised hell for about two weeks. And she come in. Every morning or in the evening when we had to go to the theocratic ministry school and service meeting and fussing, fussing, fussing until she just stopped fussing and she just stopped asking me and she just started going on her own and I just stopped. <laughs> I don't know no what. No conversation at all. Justin was just no like, no, nah, not going to happen. Conversation. I was done and I was done. <laughs> uh, the interesting thing is, and I heard you talk about this as well. And it seems like a lot of people around this time got out. This was in 2014. That's when I graduated. Um, we had the international convention that year here in Atlanta at the Georgia Dome. Mm -hmm. And I had stopped going to the meetings already. And my cousin and her son came up. And they were going to go to the convention with us. And we ended up going to the hall beforehand. So I was like, I'll go to the Kingdom Hall with them. And my cousin, because the women in my family are very outspoken as well. She went up to one of the elders and was talking to them. She was like, why haven't you checked on my cousin? And I was standing right there. And she was like, why haven't you checked on my cousin? Why haven't you called him? Why haven't you done this? And it was a brother that I didn't care too much about. Like, I, we never had no interactions, really. And he was just like, oh, uh, yeah, I tried to text him and call him. He didn't respond. And I said, no, you didn't text me. You didn't call me. Um, and then he told my mom, I think at a different time when I wasn't there, that he came by the house and knocked on the door and I ignored it. And I told her, I was like, mama, I was like, even though I don't go, I respect these people. So if they came to the door or not, I would come to the door and answer it. Um, 
could it have possibly been nobody was at home? <laughs> so I'm like, no, nah, you lie. Or I think it was that he never came back because he also never called me. And I showed her my sure phone records. I was like, Mama, I was like, Mama, I don't, I don't go no more. But if they called me, I would talk to them. Why? I don't know why. Because I showed that one. But <laughs> I was like, I would talk to him. So I showed her my phone records. I was like, he's lying. And so I was like, this man is lying on me. That's the one thing I do not like. Do not lie on me. So <sighs> that happened. And then we went to the convention. And we went to this convention. We had um it was people from Africa, people from Japan, a lot of different nationalities. Um and my old congregation was actually from Alabama. They came in, they were chosen to come in. So I got to see some of them. We actually, the first day we saw three sisters that were actually sisters on a train that we were riding in. And I was so happy to see them because I loved them so much. I loved the whole congregation so much. And I stopped going and I think I started growing my beard out. Now, the whole beard thing was a whole different thing. I didn't think too much on it. So it didn't really phase me. So I just naturally grew it. And it was just like, whatever. I like it. Um, but I was so happy to see them. I was like, oh my God, I haven't seen y'all in years. Um, how are you doing? How's this person? Oh, this person, he's at Bethel now. I'm like, oh yeah, figures. Um, I think he's gay too, but whatever. <laughs> he's having a great time up there. If they would have told me that there was nothing but brothers up there, I would have been on the first side of to go to Bethel. That would have been the best thing in the world to me. I would have been in all the meetings afterwards. But um, I was like, okay, cool. Um, we went to the convention three days or whatever. Um, it was different to me because it was more televised, I guess you could say. There was a lot of more videos happening and the governing body started coming out more. And I was just like, because I had no idea who they were. I didn't know how many they were. I didn't know what they looked like. I didn't know their names all throughout my time growing up. And I just didn't like it. It's just something that was just different about it. I was just like, this don't feel right. And I remember this like it was yesterday. My cousin, um, whose mom passed away, that was my aunt. She um, was talking about the new system. Of course, they showed this video where, you know, your dad wants come back to life and she's all emotional, you know, because she misses her mom, which we were like, you know, we totally get that. And she was talking to me and she was saying, you know, um, I can't wait to the new system because I'll get to see my unborn child. She had a miscarriage. Nobody knew about it. She didn't tell us about that. I was like, oh, okay. All right, miscarried babies coming back. I didn't know that. And then she said, um, I also can't wait to see a dinosaur, see what the dinosaurs look like. I said, hold on now, wait a minute. <laughs> dinosaurs. I said, wait, you want you wanna let me get this right. So you said you want to see a dinosaur. Yeah, we don't know what can happen, but yeah, we'll probably see dinosaurs. And then in my head, it's churning. It's churning. I'm like, dinosaurs lived a couple million years ago. Don't you hold witnesses believe the Earth is only like, what, six, seven thousand years old? How are we computing this? Because this don't work for me. This ain't, it's not matching up for me. This logic ain't working. So I was like, huh? What? So that stuck out to me like a sword. Like it was it was crazy and i i found my cousin and her husband because he's an elder too i found them to be the most spiritual people i think mostly because of my aunt just because i held her in such high regard yeah. and i held her daughter in that regard because i'm like oh this is her daughter you know she did it the right way she was raised as the witness she couldn't have smurfs and all this and that <laughs> it's crazy um Side story, my granny actually got her a Smurf when she was young. This was like in the 80s. My aunt threw it away. She got pissed off. I just wanted to throw it out there. supposed to have Smurfs. Demons. That's my Smurf. That's my Smurf story. Um, <laughs> so, but um, I just so, held, you're, so now yeah. you're starting to see that the doctrine doesn't add up either. Well, no, because I was just like, is that what we believe in? Because I didn't believe in it. And I'm like, if we believe in this, then shit is off. Because what? And I mean, I already stopped going. I already had my questions. I'm already, you know, I'm gay. I'm talking to guys. And I'm just like, I'm thinking I'm just going to hell. Or, you know, I'm not going to hell, but I'm just not going to make it. And I just was okay with that. I was just like, I'm just not going to make it. I won't see everybody again. So it won't matter. I mean, I'm going to live my life, but I just won't make it. 
And so I kind of was in the beginning stages of um, accepting that. I still, you know, had my feelings on things. Um, the mind control was still there. <laughs> but that's, it just stuck out to me. I was like, girl, you think that dinosaur was going to come back to the new system? And she believed this. And I'm like, I think of her as such a high ranking Jehovah's Witness. She's lived this life. Her entire life. Her mom was spiritual. Her dad was spiritual. She's married to an elder. He's so spiritual. They raised their children so spiritually. But she think that's dinosaur. I said, something ain't right in the pudding. It ain't right. Um, I'm going I'm to need to... Yeah, I think I'm doing the right thing here. Um, so after that, I stopped going. Um, except for Memorial. I would go to Memorial because it's a dramatic night. You know, the moon is out. It's all nice and colorful and big. And you know me. I like the dramatics. I like the little destructive books. <laughs> so it's like and a you ceremony. Got to talk about to me. death and uh, someone yeah. dying in a terrible way. I don't know. It was just so dramatic. Like, oh my God, who's going to drink the wine? We're passing the wine. We're passing the bread. Oh, it's just so rich, like uh, such a ritual to me. And it was so interesting to me. It was my favorite night. So, like, after I stopped going, I continued to go. And my granny would come with me, with my mom. And so me and my granny would cut up the whole time. Because <laughs> my granny doesn't believe in the shit at all. She told my mom, you're in a cult. <laughs> and she's like, mom, I'm not in a cult. And I was just like, oh, my God. Granny was right. <laughs> but she goes because she's, she makes her daughter happy. She goes to this because it makes her daughter happy. And she doesn't have to believe in it anyway. And we would go and we would sit. We would crack jokes <laughs> while we're singing, while we're passing the wine. She'd get the wine and be like, uh, uh, like, wish, like she's about to drink it. And I'm like, oh, my God. So we would have a good time. Um, what really changed for me is, um, well, I'll go back a little bit more. Um, once I got, once I was like, I'm not going back, like something's not right here. I'm not right, and something's not right with this organization. I started dating guys or whatever. Secretly, I still lived at home. And I just remember feeling so guilty. Like, I was like, something's going to happen to me. Like, God's going to punish me. I'm going to get AIDS or something and die because I'm doing this. And I would cry. I would weep in my car like driving around if I, if that thought came into my head because I was just like, I'm deserving. I deserve punishment. Like, I'm just going to be punished for whatever I do. And it just, it just messed with me so much. Um, but uh, that happened. And I, I had dated, uh, you know, a few guys or whatever, but it wasn't too much. I wasn't doing nothing crazy. Because <laughs> I still, ha I had that mentality of I'm dating to find somebody to marry. Of course, yeah. Which is crazy to me. I witness mentality, right? <laughs> it's crazy to me that I was, I, at that point, I was years out still from like going, but I was thinking, I'm going to find somebody to marry. I'm dating to find somebody to marry. Even though it's a man, I'm dating to find somebody to marry. I'm still living at home. Um, I'm trying to get out. I can't find enough money to get out um, to have my own place. So I'm still having to deal with them. Um, Nothing interesting really happened around that time. Just the same old fighting, arguing uh, <laughs> with the family. Um, so what really but, changed? Uh, I, then? What 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 made anything change? What really changed was me. I was more out. I was more. I spoke up more for myself, as in like I didn't let them just tell me anything or do anything. You know, I was like I'm 21 at the time. I'm going to do whatever, not do whatever I want, but like, you know, I want to do normal things that normal adults do. It's not crazy. I was at a friend's house. My mom called me. It was like, I want you to be home by nine o'clock. I'm like, I'm up the street. What are you talking about? I was like, I get off of work at 11. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking? And she was like, I want you. I was like, what? I'm grown. What are, you know, I understand if it was like 12, 1 o'clock. I'm like, I want you at home at 9 o'clock. I was like, girl, what are you talking about? No, nah, I ain't doing that. Um, so I ended up getting out my own. I ended up getting in a relationship with somebody um, who I'm still in a relationship with now. But it's, it, I think back to it, it's still wild to me that I was like, I have to date to marry. I feel like if I, if I went back 
I would have a whole different experience with it. Because, I mean, I was young. I mean, I'm happy who, who I'm with now, but it's still like I didn't experience some things that I wish I could have experienced beforehand. But, um, yeah, we were dating. I had got a house with roomies and he had got an apartment with his roommate. And so I was out of the house. I didn't care if she found out I was gay or not. She had been asking me before. Um, first time she asked me if I was gay, I was eight years old. I didn't even know what I knew what gay was, but I, I, I had no feelings. So I was like, I don't know. Shit. She was like, do you like boys? I was like, no, I like them as friends. Because it's true. I like girls as friends. <laughs> Shit. So she asked me again. I was like 21. She tried to like corner me in my room. <laughs> and I was just, I just closed the door. And she was just talking. She was like, do you like girls? Or do you like boys? You want to be with boys? And, you know, we could go to the elders and we could talk to them about this. And I just remember, I was just like, please go away. Please go away. I don't want to talk about it. Because if I talk to them, it's not going to be pretty. What I will say, and you will be embarrassed. <laughs> so, it's not anybody's it's business. Best. and uh, It's not their business. Really. And I don't know them. I only went to that congregation like two years before I graduated. Because once I graduated, I stopped. I just cut them off. If you went there your whole life, it's nobody else's business. It's, it's exactly. just bad boundaries. And then like cornering somebody in their room... That's so like aggressive and not creating any kind of safety for a real conversation to happen. That's, exactly. It's, yeah, that's not how you do it. Exactly. And I mean, at this point, she knew that my sister was gay. Uh, my sister came out due to my brother. Um, he was having an argument with my mom and cussing her out. And I guess he decided to throw us in it. So he was, he told her that my sister was gay and she had a girlfriend and that I may be gay. How? I don't know. He, I never said nothing at that point, but I'm just like, how I get in it? But so she found out that my sister was gay. And so when I had my graduation, my sister came down and her girlfriend came down and then we thought she couldn't stay with us at first. Like they couldn't stay with us, but she ended up letting them stay. And so I was like, maybe mama, you know, she may not be all the way, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid. She may not all the way be there, but she definitely, I think honestly to God, because my mom was raised around, she, my granny had a gay best friend. So my mom was raised around him. I don't think my mom cares. I think it's because she's a Jehovah's Witness that she cares. Um, just because some of the things that she does, I'm like, she don't care. Like she, If she wasn't a witness, she wouldn't give a damn. But I would hear her and my brother speak about my sister and her now wife, and they would be so homophobic. They would say some of the worst things. And my brother would play both sides of the fence. He would go to my sister and get some stuff, and then he'd go to my mom and be like, yeah, I just can't support that. And mind you, none of them are witnesses. My brother and sister are not witnesses. They weren't raised in it. They, by the time my mom got serious, I was the only child left in the house. Lucky me. Um, so, so how did your mom find out that you are actually gay? That was an interesting story. I'm happy you asked that. Um, I actually was, I went to North South Carolina to visit my cousin and his wife. And I took my damn boyfriend with me. Um, they had just met him at my sister's engagement party that my aunt threw for them, which of course my mom was not in attendance. So I was like, she's not going to be here. So you can come with me tonight. So my family just met him. I didn't come out. I was just like, oh, I have somebody coming. They're like, he has somebody coming? Like, you know, they're like snaking around and talking to each other. Like, yeah. And they're asking me, like, it's coming. You know, my granny, she's like, Justin, guess somebody coming? And they all knew, but I had never said anything. And so he just popped up. And I was just like, oh, he's here. And they're like, oh, oh my God. And then I like brought him in. They're like, oh my God, hello. They were so welcoming. <laughs> and um, that was interesting. But nobody told her from that because nobody there was a witness. Thank mm -hmm. God. Um, so on our way back to Atlanta from South Carolina, we went to Charleston. Uh, I stopped in the town um, where my aunt lived and my other cousin who's a witness lived. And I called my aunt and I told her, I was like, oh, I'm driving through. She had already met him. So I was like, we're coming. We're just going to drive by, say hi. And I asked if my cousin was there, who's a witness. And she was like, 
yeah, she's here. And I was like, oh, okay. Because I'm just, just like, I knew I would have to face it at some point. So I just took a deep breath and was just like, this is going to be the time where they're going to find out. And I'm not going to hide it. So I got to the house and she wasn't there. And I was like, why is it? Where did she go? Because I wanted to see my little cousin. And she was like, oh, she left. She said that she couldn't be around that. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> so I was like, what do you mean? She said she couldn't be around this. And she was like, oh, man. Her um, brother's girlfriend was like, she said she couldn't be around it. She left. So I was like, oh, so those are the games we're playing today. So I said, like, okay, well, I was just go over to her house. <laughs> and her mom was like, no, don't go over there. They're like, no, don't go, don't go, don't go. And I was like, no, I'm going to go over there. Why would I not Why would I not go see her? You know, we can come over there. She's just, you know, up the road. So I was irritated and we end up leaving. And I called my sister and I was telling her, I was like, can you believe she did this to me? Like, she going to do this to me? And we got into a car accident. <laughs> at an intersection. Funny thing is, if I had kept straight, I wouldn't have got into an accident. If I kept straight, I would have gone to her house. I would have been fine. But um, I got into a blind, weird blind spot from a van, a huge van in front of me, and this car came out of nowhere and hit us on my uh, boyfriend's side. So, told him my car. Um, Thank God my cousin was there, her brother, and he drove us back. But we're like two hours away from there. So, she knew about it. She knew I had my boyfriend with me and I needed her to get some stuff out of the car and check in and all that stuff. Of course, I don't know why nobody else could do it, but she did it, which I guess I'm appreciative, but she ended up telling my mom, I guess, at some point. <laughs> and I was actually um, at my boyfriend's house and it was the Sunday morning, I believe. We were waking up and she called, my mom called me, and I was like, hey, mom. And she was just like, hey, um, they told me about that um, man you're dating. And for some reason, it just made me laugh, because I look at my boyfriend, I was just like, I guess he a man, but it, it, was like, it just sounds so dirty when she said it. I was just like, he's my little baby. <laughs> but she was just like, yeah, she was like, uh, I heard that you're dating this man. And I was like, Yeah. And she was like, mm, uh, well, you know, I'm going to have to go to the elders. And I was like, I haven't, I'm in my head. I'm like, I haven't been to the kingdom hall in six years. Like, what the hell? They don't know me. I don't know them. So I was like, okay. <laughs> and she was like, well, you know, if I go to them and they just fellowship you, I can't have a relationship with you anymore or do anything with you. And I was like, okay. So she hung up and I didn't hear from her for a week. She called me back that next Sunday and I'm like, hey. She was like, I spoke to the elders. Um, they said that if you wanted to come in, um, you can come in and talk to them. But if not, I mean, they can't make you come in because you hadn't been there, you know, in a while or whatever. And I was just like, yeah, okay, no, I'm not going to talk to them. <laughs> and she's just like laid off for it. She didn't talk to me for a while. And um We've gone back and forth, back and forth. It was mostly on her end, trying to get me to come back and say, like, you know, you're living a botched life, you're wrong, and all this and that. And I'm just like, I don't feel like I'm wrong. I feel like I'm living my life. And I just like, can we just agree to disagree? Then we can't agree to disagree. Yeah, because I have to do whatever you want me to do. Um, so fast forward. <sighs> We've been together for years now. Um, had an apartment, I believe, at the time, which she helped me move in. She helped both of us, uh, her and my dad. My dad is always like, he just does whatever my mom, he don't care about nothing. <laughs> he just does whatever she says. But um, she like brought, she bought us plates and stuff like that. And we've had a bumpy, we've had bumpy times, but she bought us plates and dishes and, you know, it was nice. Um, But um, I was listening to a podcast called um, I think I, I think it was called I Can't Believe I Was in a Cult because for some reason those stories interested me like cult like stories and I was I like why oh. <laughs> I know and I was just like these they're interesting to me and so I would listen to it and while I was driving because I drove for work 
and it was called I Can't Believe I Was in a Cult. I can't remember the name of the people. They're they're a good podcast as well. Um, and I'm listening to all these different stories, Mormons, you know, Nexium and all that. And I'm just like, oh, there's certain elements in these that kind of fit with me that like how I was brought up, but it didn't click. Um until one day I saw they had a new episode and it was from a Jehovah's Witness. I said, oh. Now, I remember back when I was younger, there was an elder giving a talk that said, you know, so-and-so, people think we're in a cult. I said, people think we're in a cult? <laughs> I was like, I didn't know people thought that. I knew they thought we worshiped Satan. I was like, that's, of course, ridiculous. But I was like, they think we're in a cult? Um, so that was the first time I ever heard of that. But I saw Jehovah's Witnesses. So I was like, hmm, I'm going to listen to it. And out of all these years, I think at that point, it had that was 2021, so right after the pandemic and all that, I think it had been, it had been like seven years since I had been to a meeting. Um, but I never looked nothing up. It never dawned on me to look anything up or to look into what I felt. Um, I remember when I was younger, I accidentally stumbled across, I think, some apostate stuff on YouTube. And I listened to it for a few minutes just to hear what he was saying. Then I got terrified. I was like, oh my God, I gotta shut this down. And I think I was terrified because I knew it would lead me out. Because I'm like, he's going to make sense and it's going to make sense to me and I'm going to leave. And I was too terrified at the time. So I listened to the story with this man. I'm like, yeah, he's telling the truth. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know when the whole apostate thing started. Like when they started talking about that a lot. Do you like? Did they always talk about apostates? And oh, stuff? they've always talked about apostates. Well, shit! I was listening to whatever was going on in my head, looking out the window. I never paid attention. I mean, I to think it, they so may I... more recently because apostates have a larger voice because we have things like the internet yeah. and such, you know, and so mm -hmm. it has to be talked about more. But yeah, they've always it's always been a thing. As far it, as I it know. never dawned on me, yeah. See, like, it never dawned on me. Like, I was in it, but uh, I never was, like, really in it. Like, I wasn't yeah. in it like that. I've learned so much listening to other people's story. I was like, oh, we believe that? Oh, I guess we did. I was like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, the people that don't know the most are the loudest. So, <laughs> so I'm listening to his story, and I'm just like, oh, wow. Yeah, that that's that's accurate. And then... This one thing he said really jolted me was he said that um he was out in service with a sister. I think he was an elder at the time. And the sister just out of the blue just talked about it. Was just like, um, if Armageddon came tomorrow or whatever, and I had to step over my dead daughter's body to get into Arm or get into um paradise, I would step on it. And he was like, Oh my god, I'm in a fucking cult. And it clicked to me then. I said, oh, my, my God. <laughs> like, in my car, I was like, oh, my God. Like, shaking. Like, like it clicked at that moment. And then he went on to talk. And then he talked about child sexual abuse. And I was like, I never heard of that. I was like, no, I never heard of that. But, like, me as a rational person, I'm like, I'll go look it up and see. You know, there's nothing there, you know. So when I got home, or I don't even think I got home, I think I just looked it up on my phone, and I just typed in Jehovah's Witnesses Child Sexual Abuse. It was all there. I said, oh my God. <laughs> and it just like, everything just fell into place. I think everything is a very abrupt with me. It doesn't really take its time. It just kind of just, bam, <laughs> hits <at> me. <laughs> all at once. Seven years later. Like, have not been at the meeting, do not believe in it. Um, believe in some of the principles, maybe, but not sure. I just knew something wasn't right. And um, I just couldn't believe it. And I just went down this huge rabbit hole. Um, I think I ended up typing in on the web, on the site that I use for a podcast to listen to, I ended up finding um, Critical Thinkers. Um, with JT and Lady C and I was like they sound like people I know <laughs> I was like they sound like people I know like yeah. JT has a little southern twang and I'm like you know I'm southern I'm like yeah I feel this and so I'm listening to them and I'm listening to another story about a brother talking about how his 
wife and kids basically left him. And about the blood transfusion and the organ donation, I was like, they didn't believe in organ donation? It's like, no, they didn't believe in vaccines? No. Like, they didn't believe you couldn't even get blood fractions or anything? No. And I'm like, I would be so pissed off if somebody I knew passed away and I believed in this. I was like, thank God I didn't have... Well, when I was growing up, I didn't have a blood card. I don't think I ever had a blood card. But I was like, I started thinking, I was like, if I got into an accident, would my mom have given me something to save me? Or she would have just let me become a martyr? Like, would she have just let me die? So, oh, that went, oh, God. I went down a whole rabbit hole with that. When people said they go down a rabbit hole. I went down. I crashed. I listened to them. I think I end up, next, I found your podcast. And I like the formatting better because I like to hear people tell their stories. I like to hear what they experience and as much fullness as it can be. So that's when I just started listening. So like some of yours were like three or four hours long. <laughs> and I'm like, on a day I got a long stretch, I got to drive four hours. I'm like, this is the perfect thing. I put on a podcast as soon as I leave my house. By the time I get to my destination, I'm upset. I'm crying. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> I mean, look, it's hard to it's hard to argue with somebody's experience, right? We can argue doctrine, exactly. we can argue whatever, but a lived exactly. experience is much more valuable than an opinion. Exactly. It, 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 I rather I rather hear what people went through than to listen to somebody say, "Well, this is this, and this is why." And I'm like, "That's fine," but I'm, I I I don't want to just listen to somebody. I like to go find it out for myself. So just like I found out about the child sexual abuse, I was like, "I never heard of that." So, I, but I'm going to look it up before I believe it. And I looked it up. It was plain as day. It was there, and I'm just like, okay. Like, could this be? You know, I'm like, no. These are court records. What? What is happening? How did I never hear about this? How has nobody ever heard about this? And um, I was like, I'm not going to tell my mom. I can't, I'm not going to talk to her about this because she'll think I'm crazy or whatever. I don't know. And um, I went down the rabbit hole, um, finding out a whole lot of more things. JW Facts is a lifesaver. <laughs> I love JW Facts. Uh, I love your podcast. I love Lady uh, C and JT. I listen to all of y'all still to this day. Um. What else is there? Oh, uh, your Facebook group that helped a lot. <laughs> We're venting. <laughs> <laughs> because nobody else understands what you go sure. through. So I tell like my I told my boyfriend, I tell my sister, and they're just like, Oh, yeah, well, we know that. And I'm like, Well, it's a little bit more deeper than this. I need to tell you so you can understand it. So I'm like, there's places where there are people that get it. I don't have to explain too yeah. much on it. And I'm like, I know they're telling the truth because sometimes they put themselves in bad light. Like telling their story, we all have situations where we made bad decisions. I'm like, they wouldn't just, you know, put that out there. You know, like this is their authentic story. The good, the bad, the ugly. So I just could not believe it. I, my YouTube was consumed with everything. Um what is it? Also, John Cedar, Lloyd Evans channel or whatever. I didn't get too much into him. Um, his voice <laughs> he reminded me too much of an elder. <laughs> and it made me sleepy. <laughs> but well, he had I mean, some very informative stuff. There's a lot of people out there. And I mean, there's even more today than there probably was then. There's always more and more. Um, yeah. But you found all this stuff out. Did... You said you weren't gonna tell your mom any of it. Did you mm -hmm. did you refrain from doing so, or did there come a point where it felt <laughs> necessary to do so? Um, how did it start? Oh, okay, yes. I put <laughs> in like little, I put little hints out there, like list questions. I didn't go full force. I think the one thing that irritated me the most was the whole United Nations thing and mm -hmm. that they were a part of it. Because I know when I was growing up, definitely United Nations, they're the devil or they're well, whatever. They're part of the world ending. And so I just sent her, um, I think, a screenshot of something. And it 
it was talking about that. And I was like, did you know that this happened? You know, did you know that this happened? Um, no, I didn't know that this happened, but you can't believe everything that you see on the. Well, okay. Um, I was like, well, these are like, you know, legitimate documents showing that they were a part of it. And I was like, once they were found out, they uh, retracted from it like the next day or so. And she's just like, Justin, you're just going to have to just, you're going to have to do your own research and you're going to have to talk to the elders and they can. And I was like, okay. Um, I didn't want to hit the heavy stuff. I was just like, I'm just going to piecemeal it, you know, just give it a little hit. Cause we had our moments where we talk, we have our moments where we don't talk, you know, it depends on her mood. She goes up and down. Um, some days she likes talking to me, some days she don't. So our relationship is pretty much gone <laughs> almost to a point but um what really set it off like i said i do everything abrupt it was my f boyfriend's birthday um two years ago and i think i wrote about this on facebook because that was so upset <laughs> in the face in your facebook group and we were about to get ready to go do something for his birthday and she called me because my sister was worried about something with involving our relationship because the way we spend holidays and I'm like I'm not used to holidays so I don't care you know he doesn't have to be with me I don't have to be with him like on holidays it's, it's not really something that I care about but for her it, my sister it was a big deal she's like you need to be together I'm like girl mind your business <laughs> so I guess she told my mom my mom hopped on the train because she just don't like the fact that I'm in a relationship with a man anyway so she got she got on the phone and she was so fake with it because I had just talked to her and I know she just talked to my sister and she was like oh well I just thought about it um she's not gonna be with you for Thanksgiving I'm like what the fuck do you care you don't even celebrate Thanksgiving oh sorry you celebrate Thanksgiving you say you don't celebrate Thanksgiving <laughs> yes you just celebrated on Friday instead of Thursday no she I celebrated the date Thursday. of I told her I just recently told her because I invited her to Thanksgiving at my cousin's house, her niece's house. And I was like, Mom, just come. The family's coming together, you know. When have you known me to celebrate Thanksgiving? I told her, and this is probably why she don't like me sometimes. I was like, Mama, we didn't go nowhere to celebrate Thanksgiving. We always had Thanksgiving at our house. Everybody just came to our house to eat. You know, you made excuses for it. Like, oh, everybody's off, so you might as well. I had Thanksgiving at my house here. The first year I was, we had just bought a house, I was here. I had my family come in. She was like, oh, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Okay, cool. Find out the same day my aunt and cousin drove two hours to come to her house to eat and stayed there. And she's 15 minutes away from me. So I'm like, yeah, you say you don't think celebrate Thanksgiving, but, you know, you do. So that's probably why she gets pissed off at me because I hold her feet to the fire. <laughs> sure. I don't care. But she started in on that with me, uh, with him not being around and she was like he's not around you know trying to basically put him down and i just walked out of the house because it was about to get nasty and i didn't want him to hear it and i closed slammed the door closed and i was outside and i let it rain i let it rain i said you sit here talking about me but you need to be worried about this. Did you know that they doing this, this, this? <laughs> it was like an apostate. Like, you sound like an apostate. I said, no, I, you know, I thought you would say that. So that's why I'm not, I'm not giving you everything right now. And we went and I was screaming. I was yelling all outside. My poor neighbors, they were probably worried, but I was pissed off. I told her about 1975, which she knew about, which I never knew about. That was the first time I heard it was on the podcast. I was like, they believed that the world was going to end. Yes, they, they. some witnesses thought that was going to happen and they were misled. They had got together and they thought that. And I was like, but why? I was like, but I've never knew that. You, but you knew that? Of course she knew she was alive at the time. Well, but she knows like, the you... sanitized version she's been told to make it sound. But like I wonder who a small told her. Group. I wonder who told her. That's what I want to know. Because I'm like, who told you this? Because she she didn't graduate college or, or graduate high school and go to college to be with my aunt until like the 80s. So yeah. 75 had already passed. She Somewhere wasn't in, that came you know, up. She wasn't in there. 
Exactly. So I'm like, I'm wondering, how do you know that? Who told you that? And did you not look into it? So that tripped me out. I was pissed off about that. Um, I talked about, you know, the great crowd that will not pass away before the system. I specifically remember um, a meeting where one of the elder, I think he was the Kobe, he was giving on the talk and he was talking about, you know, the 144,000, the numbers dwindling down. I was young and he was like, you know, this system, um, the new system will come and some of them will still be here. And, you know, they're getting up in age now. They're old. I was like, so what happened to that? What happened to that? So I was like, what is this new overlapping generation that's happening over here? What is this going on, girl? And she's just like, oh, you know, she got excuses for everything. And I just let her have it. I let her have it. Everything that I had thought of, saw, learned, I vomited it out. I hit her like a train. <laughs> and I think she didn't talk to me for a while, but I got it all out. <laughs> I didn't mean to, but there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, they, they have an entire life to indoctrinate us. And then exactly. one moment after all of this pressure, after all of, you know, what is often would be referred to as abuse we end up having a moment where it all comes out and then we're supposed to feel bad because we finally said something. No, I, I, mm. I got no reason to feel bad about anything. Exactly. Uh, I didn't, I'm not the one who started this fire or started this war. I just ended it. And I did it so respectfully. I didn't cuss. I didn't do anything. I didn't, you know, I did. If you did so if respectfully. The emotions came out that way. It, it's so pent up in people. It comes out how it has to come out. Yeah, I vomited it. I worried vomited it. Of course you did. <laughs> I, and I, I knew better. Without anybody telling me, I knew not to do that. That's why I wasn't going to. I was just, like I said, piecemeal. I'll throw you a little piece here. I may throw you something just to get the little turbines going. But it didn't work. And I... No. I I let it all out because she pissed me off and sure. I didn't care <laughs> at the time. I was defending my man. So I was like, you ain't gonna throw stones at me. Yeah, she baby. Heard that. I'm gonna throw a boulder at you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, you ain't gonna throw no stones at me. I'm gonna throw this boulder at you, baby, and keep walking. So we didn't talk for a while after that. <laughs> sure. Um, but I just kept on the journey of just learning. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still on the journey of learning. There's a lot of things that happen or we supposedly believe in that I didn't even know. And I look back now and um all the kids that I grew up with, I can't think of one that's still a Jehovah's Witness. Maybe the one that was my friend, but I haven't talked to him in years, and I saw him getting engaged recently, and the girl ain't a sister, I don't think. So I don't know. And nobody I know is still in it that I grew up with. So I kind of kind of threw that in her face a little bit a couple of days ago. <laughs> she was talking about, I was like, oh, you remember so-and-so? She was like, yeah, what happened to him? I was like, oh, yeah, I don't know. But he got a full body tech too. So yeah, I don't know. You know, you may want to take this nice gay son. You know, I pay my taxes. I work. I pay my bills. You know, I don't cause you no problems. I don't cause you no troubles. I'm not having a smorgasbord of children. You know, I'm very, you know, other than my doggies, those are my babies. But, you know, I pretty much live life. I live with my now fiance. We're engaged, getting married next year. Um, Congrats. She was okay with that. She was kind of like, I wanted to tell her before somebody else told her. And she was kind of like, well, just, you know, I was like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I was like, I'm just letting you know. All right. Because, you know, you say that you hear things from other people. So I'll let you know. But she's not invited because my sister tried to invite her to her wedding a couple of years ago when she got married. And she turned her down. She said, no, I'm not coming to your wedding. And it hurt my sister so bad. And it pissed me off. I was, I understood her at first. But then I asked my friend, Nina, I was like, I told her about it. And she was like, well, my mom is a witness. And if one of her kids were gay, she would come to her. Their wedding is their child. And I was like, girl, you know what? You right. So I was like, you know what? You messed up. So I was pissed off at her about that. So when I got engaged, they were like, oh, you didn't invite your mom? Everybody asked, oh, is your mom coming? I was like, no, she's not invited. She already told me. She told me where she 
is with me. She told me what she wants or what she will approve of and all that. So I, was, I don't have to ask her. Oh, you don't get to disapprove get her of me daily and then come to the party. Exactly. And I'm just like, I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of declining me. That's one yeah. thing. So anybody <laughs> who ain't cool with me, I'm like, I didn't invite. So she's not invited. I tried to invite my stepdad because I know he doesn't care, but he he likes to have a peaceful home with my mom. So he's not coming. So he's the only dad I know. I met my dad a few years ago at 20, but I don't care about him. <laughs> but with him came three other siblings who are okay with one. I got a brother. So I finally feel like I have a brother that I get along with. So he's cool. He's Nation of Islam, so that's interesting. Um, so I didn't think we would get along. Uh, I don't know if you know too much about Nation of Islam. Yeah, I know. But they're kind of like they're they're kind of like their own little thing, you know, going on over there. So I didn't think me and him would get along, but he is very supportive. He's cool. He's not homophobic, at least not to me. <laughs> and he's gonna be at the wedding with his wife and his new baby. So I'm happy to have them. But as, long, as far as with my parents, I don't really, like I said, they live 15 minutes away from me. I haven't seen, I saw my mom two weeks ago, but before then I hadn't seen her in like at least three, four months. And um, I don't know. barely talked to her. Yeah, yeah, I know. It sucks. And my brother, I hadn't seen since May and probably haven't talked to him since then, but we don't talk really. Um, So it's I don't really talk to them, but I have my core. I have my sister, my sister-in-law. They just had a baby last year. I have my cousin, her husband, my aunt. Uh, I got so close to my aunt when we moved here. My mom's younger sister. I got close to my granny, uh, my mom's mom. So they're very supportive of me. They'll be there. They've always been supportive. And I could be myself around them. I could talk how I want. They can, you know, just be me without having to muzzle myself or feel awkward. And that's so, it. Most importantly, you got Justin. I got Justin, man. That's a lot to handle already. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm being like, able to be yourself and to live a life that is Justin's today. You know, yes. it doesn't need to reflect your mom or Jehovah's Witnesses or anybody else. You get to be mm -hmm. Justin. You have a boyfriend, fiance. You get to, you know, that yeah, that's fiance. who you've chosen. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I say, yeah, fiance. <laughs> we bring it up the now. Wedding coming. You've got you're gonna have people there who support you as Justin, not mm -hmm. a cult, not a belief system, not a family, but people who are there to support Justin and exactly your, your fiance. That's awesome. That's why we're stuck on having people that support us. Because like I, I told you earlier, uh, my fiance is a PK, a preacher's kid. And so um, his family hasn't supported our relationship. They've been nice to me. So, you know, I've been at events and stuff. And they've been very nice. His parents, his mom, his dad, and his brothers. Um, but it's always been just the disconnect that they can't support um, mostly because they lead the church. And I'm like, yo, we, the people that go to your church don't care. They are very friendly to me. They like us. So I'm like, I don't know what, what you're standing on, but okay. Um, I know recently she just told me that I can come to their house for Christmas before I wasn't allowed to come to their house. I can go to other things, but I'm not allowed in the house. So that was something that I had to be patient on because I had to think, I'm like, I'm not marrying them. I'm marrying him. I love him. So I, I can't, he can't control who he gets on my family. I can't control, you know, his family as well. So that's how we've been able to, you know, keep the peace and everything. So I've been invited this year to Christmas because Christmas is a week away or so. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, So I want to spend Christmas with his family, which is going to be interesting. His mom is very nice, very sweet. Uh, his dad is the one that's kind of a little, mm, we got to work on him a little bit. But for the wedding, they're not coming at all. They're not coming. Um, so I know that kind of, his mom is kind of torn. She keeps asking like details about the wedding and she's like, don't count me out yet. 
But we're like, well, we want you to be there, but if you can't be supportive, then don't don't come. count me out yet. Well, don't string me along either. You know, you, you, I'm like, this thing is expensive. Don't waste my money. <laughs> don't waste my money. <laughs> yeah. So this is very expensive. And um, I have my friend Nina. I invited her and plus one. I have my other friend um who's a witness. Oh, she's not a witness now, but she was a witness and um in that kingdom hall, I was the only one that was baptized other than my friend, um, the other one. So none of them really have to deal with the whole shunning thing. Um, <laughs> let's, let's end, let's end this on Justin. So Justin, what do you have today that you really love about your life? What do you want to have in your life? You know, you've got the wedding coming up and everything. So you just, you know, what do you enjoy about life today and what do you hope to see going forward? I enjoy that I can be authentic in my life that has brought me less stress. I am joyful that I can control what happens in my home. I have a very peaceful home. We do not argue. We do not fight. <laughs> we have our normal disagreements and we move on from there. There's no yelling. There's no screaming. There's no throwing. Um, I have my two doggies that I love. They're my babies. They make me happy. Um, mostly, I just love having my space. I prayed for my own space away from that house for so long. And my mom, she would be like, well, why, why do you act like you hate us? Why, what have we done to you? And I'm just like, baby, I don't know what to tell you. You're just making me miserable. I'm miserable here. So I'm happy to have my own home with my fiance, getting married, starting a life, hopefully having children in the next year, couple years. Um, I'm also in school to get my degree. So I should be done by 2026. Um, I'm getting an associate's while I'm getting my bachelor's. So that'll be done next year. So that's like six months away. I'll be done with that. Um, thinking about going to get my master's too. Why not? <laughs> And what? So, what are you going uh, to school for? I'm going to school to get an associate's in information technology, and I'm getting a bachelor's in data analysis. Nice. So, yeah. So, we hopefully we're going to be making some good money and rolling it up in there. I ain't going to come in with no baggy, dingy suits, okay? <laughs> Everything's going to be spelt. Everything is going to be right and tight, okay? Like, we're going to have some nice, clean shoes on. We're going to have some nice accessories. I've seen some of them rings that them body members have. I said, oh, I wonder how much that costs, okay? <laughs> we're gonna get so, you a yeah. pinky ring <laughs> and uh, we'll a Rolex a watch, ring. right? <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna be rolled out. Have a couple, couple different rings on here. Have some cufflinks, you know. Have a nice tie that I don't just clip on. We go. I'm gonna learn how to tie a tie one day. So we go turn. We go learn how to tie the tie. So um, hopefully that's in the future. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, I'm probably needing to go to therapy. <laughs> I'm open to the idea. I just haven't had the time or I think the resources with my insurance yet, but I'm open to it and I plan on it because I'm like, there's a lot more deeper things it's to unpack. It's very important as somebody who works with people daily, it's very yes. important to to work on that stuff because there are patterns there that will be repeated if we don't uh, understand where some of this comes from. Exactly. And I applaud you on that because I could not, I couldn't imagine myself having to hear so much like dark, deep stories. Some of the stories that I've heard on your podcast, I was like, oh my God, like how did how do you mentally deal with it all the time? Like listening, like having to listen to it, as well as um what is it? Uh coach them, coach the people too. I was like, God. I hope he. I hope he gets some good vacations. <laughs> I was like mentally. I take I, care of myself for sure. Yes. Yeah. After a good. After a, I, the deeper ones are the real good ones. I like to get deep down in them. Like if I'm not angry and upset and crying, I'm like. Uh, but if they'll, if I'm angry, upset, crying, I'm like, oh, that's a good one. So I'm like, how does he get through this? Because I feel like I've just been ran through the ring. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, how do these people survive this? Oh, Jesus. Well, but you, you now, can survive anything. Yeah. And now, Justin, you've, you know, I, I know I've said this at the end of other episodes, but you've 
added your story to that rich tapestry of human experience that is all of our experiences of, of coming through these various groups. And of course, Jehovah's mm -hmm. Witnesses being primarily the one that I end up talking about. And I'm just happy that you get to be a part of it too. I'm just sorry you had to be, but I'm, I'm happy to. that since you had to be here, you are telling your story to help others. I look at it as everybody has a story to tell. So yep. everybody has, you know, they've gone through different experiences. Some are worse than mine. Some are better than mine. You know, we all have things that we go through. And I think it makes us who we are as long as we survive through it. And this is what I always tell my fiance when we're going through something tough. I'm like, it's going to get better. We, it may be hard right now, but it's going to get better. And I look back at those days when I was a teenager and I was depressed and having suicidal ideations and just wanting to get away from where I was at. I was, I would look and be like in a few years, you know, it'll be better and I'll be in a better situation. And so I can look back now and say, I've made it. I'm in my own situation that I can create and control. And I don't have to tell nobody or have somebody tell me how to live my life, what I can and cannot do, what I can and cannot wear, what I can or cannot say. So that makes me feel good. <laughs> oh, oh, oh.